Good afternoon, all. How are we doing today? Hello. Hi, good. Good. Okay, great, great. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to introduction of anti-money laundering and compliance systems. Um, my name is Ms. Bullard. Um, primarily, um, my background with the institute I've been teaching um, this course for the last um, six years. I also teach customer service and marketing, and I teach supervisory skills. Um, this program is a three-tier program. This is the beginning. Um, we're here to actually go on a journey. This program was developed to assist persons who want to move on to the international compliance diploma. What we found was that persons um, were joining the international diploma program and they were not successful. Hence, we uh, prepared these classes to assist persons with moving on to the ICA diploma. So this is just the first stage. Um, this course is, of course, you know, on Tuesdays from 6 to 9 p.m. It's for the next five weeks. So we will have four weeks of lecture. Um, there are eight chapters in the book and we'll cover those eight chapters and then we'll have one week of review. So a total of five weeks. The next step after you would have completed this course is then the intermediate section and then that's 10 weeks. And if you choose to move on after the intermediate section of 10 weeks, then you would move on to the international diploma in compliance, governance, and risk. And that is nine months of anti-money laundering and nine months of compliance, governance, and risk. Okay, and so that's 18 months in total. So most persons, you know, they decide that after they were taken the five weeks, which is the entry level, they make the decision if compliance is for them. Now, compliance is a very complex area of the financial services sector. And so many persons, you know, stop at the first level. However, persons also decide that, you know, compliance is for me. I'm here to learn. I, I do want to go on to the next levels. And so they go on to the intermediate level. Okay, and then persons also go on, if, if you are a compliance officer or you work in the compliance department or um, if you just feel that compliance is the field that you wanna enter, then definitely you go on to the international diploma with governance, risk and compliance and anti-money laundering for the 18 months. So it really depends on you, but we can use this first session to make that determination is compliance for me? Do I want to go on to the next level? Do I want to go on this journey with Miss Bullard? So all of, you know, depending on what happened in the next five weeks, it will help you make those decisions. Okay, um, are there any questions so far? Okay, you got to speak back to me so I can know that you're there. I see a Lanika, Latoya, Felicia, and Shamara. Are you there? Yes. Yes. No okay. questions so far. No, no questions, questions so far. No okay. questions. No questions yet. This class is very interactive. Okay. Um, what is required is that you would read the chapters, and the chapters are primarily very small, two to three pages, and then you come and we have a discussion. So it's a discussion-based class. So. After today, all of us are gonna be familiar with each other. We're all gonna be in a network and we have to come each week and have a discussion. So if y'all don't talk back to me, Miss Bullet is gonna fall asleep, okay? So y'all have to keep me awake, all right? So I need each of you to participate and you know, just so we would give some persons time. I only see seven persons here and I, I'm expecting about 12. So I know it's very difficult to work and then try and make it to class. So um, in the interim, we can just introduce ourselves and just you know, say where in the financial sector we are, whether it's at a bank or a number house or a casino or a broker dealer 
real estate agent or law, law firm or accounting firm. So wherever you are in the financial services sector, just introduce yourself, um, let us know, and then, you know, just tell us something interesting about yourself. And we'll do that just so we can know who we will be liaising with each, each week. Okay, so I'm just gonna go down the, the list and, and call names. And, and so just please introduce yourself. Um, Deandra. Hi, can you hear me? Hi. Yes, ma'am. Okay, uh, my name is Deandra Zimenez. I currently work at Cornwell Bank. Um, I recently started training in the accounts officer area. So, you know, we deal a lot with opening accounts for customers, wires, things of that nature. Um, I've been with the bank for almost 10 years, but um, I, like I said, just started working in the customer service area. I've been back office most of my time at the bank. So I think that um, this course will help me in my new area, especially dealing with customers, opening accounts and stuff like that. Um, something interesting about myself. I don't know. I just turned 30 last month. So, yeah. Okay. Welcome. <laughs> welcome. Thank um, you. And, and, and you turned over a new leaf, you know, at 35, yeah. they say you're in the second half of your life. So, so you're almost there. Yeah. So, so, so very good. And we're happy to have you. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Let's see who's next on our list. Uh, Lanique. Hi. Good night. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Lanique Bethel. I work at Cornwall Bank as well in the accounts department. I actually work with Deandra. Oh, and, excellent. And I've been in the bank for nine years, um, come November. Um, started out as a teller and then worked various different positions to now land me as an accounts officer. And I've been there for the last two years. No? Oh, wow. I think it's three for the last three years, almost three years. So um, for me, well, it's same as Deandra. It, it, this will assist me in gaining more knowledge, especially when we're dealing with um, different types of accounts we have to open up and knowing the different procedures, like compliance-wise and all these different risks and stuff like that. So, um, and I'm eager to go on this journey as well, Ms. Bullard, to go straight to the ICA and pass it on the first go. Excellent. Excellent. I'm with you 100%. Yes, ma'am. And something interesting about me, um, I'm getting married in February. Congratulations. So, thank you. Congratulations. So I, I plan on wedding oh. too. Okay. <laughs> so we know you you extra busy, right, Lenny? And yes, what we, Yeah. What we tell... Um, what I tell all, everybody in my class, because I find out that we have a lot of scholars, we have um, very intelligent persons that join this class, but they are overwhelmed. They are overwhelmed with kids, with husbands, with wives, and definitely with work, right? Mm -hmm. and so I always yeah. suggest that you speak to your family, um, especially because of course we always have more women than men. And so speak to the husbands and, and let them know that you're on this journey and ask them for help and support. We have a lot of persons because we're online, we have the baby sitting on our lap, we cook in, we, we pick up people, Miss Bullard and I are on the way, picking up my child from dance class and, and they in class, right? And so yes. this is a very complex area of the financial services sector. And if you're not overwhelmed, you can pay attention and retain the information, okay? Yes, so, like I said, organize it. It goes for organization and, and a little bit of help. So speak to um, your partner and, and ask him to please support you and please help you, you know, with, just with life. So you can yes, mom. go school and work. And I promise you, you'll find that beneficial. Okay, thank you. Okay, great, great, very good. Okay, Latoya Cash. Good evening, everybody. Um, you guys can hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, my name is Latoya. I currently work at Atos Holdings. That's Wendy's Farmers. Um, I'm in the accounts department. I'm actually currently a internal control officer, clerk for all of the Wendy's brands. Uh, I've been doing that 
at ATOS for three years. Prior to that, I was at AML and I've been in that department for four years. So, um, seven years in total. Uh, my area pretty much deals with the day-to-day -day internal audit of all of the cashes work. So that's a very tedious process. And um, I thought that this would give me a little, a little bit more insight on, you know, fraudulent activities because I come across that a lot. So um, I'm very interested in learning a lot more in, into this particular field. And like Lonique and Deandra, I'm trying to go to the final course of it all and um, be certified. Um, something interesting about myself, I don't know. I'm a homebody, I have kids, I don't know. <laughs> kids, um, my baby is actually 12. So, uh, I don't know, that's pretty much, I'm a, I'm a boring person. <laughs> so that's it. Okay, okay, well, Latoya, thank you for sharing. And don't you you stay out of trouble, so it's, it's okay. I do, boring. you stay out of trouble. So I that's, do, that's a good thing. And yeah. I, yeah, I'm very excited for all of you that y'all want to go on the full journey, and, 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 and that's excellent. Um, my when I first, no, I don't want to say first started, but um, in my career, I worked in internal control as well, and I attribute that to all my success throughout my entire career because mm -hmm. I would have learned so much about, you know, different departments and what they did. And so you're in an excellent position where you can learn a lot. And, and definitely as compliance professionals, we need to be well-versed in all areas oh, of right. our institution. So, so, so very good um, placement where you are right now. And Took full, take full advantage of what all you can learn whilst you're in that position. Yes, thank you very much. Good, very good. Kanisha Hamilton? Oh, wet. Hi. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. All right, so I just joined, so I am unaware of the instructions. Can you repeat them for me? Okay. We're just introducing ourselves and saying um, we're in the financial services sector who work and something interesting about ourselves. All right. My name is Kenisha Hamilton. I am currently a teller at Fidelity Bahamas Limited. And, and something interesting about myself. Oh, I'm a mom. That's very interesting. I'm a new <laughs> mom. <laughs> okay, so con congratulations and, and welcome you. to motherhood. It's <laughs> definitely a, 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 a new period of your life where you will learn everything you need to know by the time it's your child reach 18 you'll be an expert mom so so that's a journey definitely a good journey and I wish you all the best well, thank you so much you're welcome okay Felicia Pratt hi my name is Felicia okay. I worked at Ants Slacker for Bahamas for the last five years. Um, recently, Ants Slacker got bought by Delta, from so now part of Delta. I'm 23 years old, and I work inside data management where we open accounts, file open currencies, close accounts. Um, I wanted to join this class because I wanted to move up in the industry. I wanted to be a part of different, like, no different things. Um, something interesting about me, I don't know, I guess. Um, the financial industry, um, industry excites me, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Very, very good. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Opal notes. Good night. My apologies. Um, we're introducing ourselves. Yes. Yeah. Introducing ourselves, uh, saying where we work and something interesting about ourselves. Okay, good night, everyone. My name is Opal Knowles. I work at Commonwealth Bank. Um, something interesting about myself, I, I enjoy doing makeup. Okay, 
excellent because definitely you know every day you have to go what they say with your face beat right and looking right so so very good um that definitely helps you stand out in the financial services sector we we sometimes take these things lightly or for granted but it it, it makes a difference okay opal so thank thank you for sharing um precious rigby Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Precious Rick for Sunshine Insurance. Something interesting about myself is I would say that I like to try new things. So I guess joining this course, um, introducing me, introducing myself into a different career path. Okay, okay, so welcome. And um, we hope you get everything that you came here for at the end of um, this journey. Uh, we definitely hope. Um, that you are pleased and, and find all the information that you would have garnered, um, you know, valuable. So, so welcome, Precious. Um, Shamara Burrows. Good afternoon. My name is Shamara Burrows. I work at Easy Payday Loans. I'm the accountant there. I did my bachelor's in accounting at COB. Um, the compliance officer, Ms. Peggy Knowles, she feels like I should do compliance so I can be a successor. So she has faith in me, so I need to pass this. <laughs> <laughs> Not saying that I won't, but I'm, I will try my best. You know, I don't like to read, but you know, we're gonna get there. Something mm -hmm. interesting about me, I um, celebrated my second year wedding anniversary yesterday. My birthday is on Thursday and I have a one year old. Oh, wow, okay, congratulations on that that wedding anniversary and we hope it turns into 20 happy years Thank and, you. And, and celebrate please you know life is so tough and we you know overlook we always get in a fight or a row or a, a disagreement but we we throw away our celebration so please even if you know just within you celebrate yourself celebrate your birthday and all these anniversaries because you know time is just so precious and short so so congratulations. Okay. Okay. So good. So we have about 10 persons here. And again, this is being recorded. And so um, I know, like I said, it's difficult to get from work and fight all that traffic and, you know, try to be settled and, and tune in. So this is being recorded and you can always listen to it afterwards for any part that you would have missed. Okay. And so I'm going to jump right into it. I I imagine all of you would have received an email from me because um, you're here and you would have received Miguel's email. So we're just gonna go through the instructions for the next five weeks, just to make sure that we are all on the same page and that we understand. And remember, I have to say this a hundred times, this is discussion based, okay? You have to talk back to Miss Bullet or Miss Bullet will start snoring in the middle of this class, okay? So make sure that, um, you're, you interact and like I said, um, we, we're all now in this, this ICA network, okay? And even for the persons who are going to end their journey at the end of the five weeks, um, we, we still want you in our network. We want to be able to call you up and get good advice and we wanna share good counsel with you, okay? And so um, we, we want you to stay in the network even if you don't go on the full journey with us. Okay, so now I'm going to share my screen um, so we can look at the instructions for the class and you may ask any questions that you may have. No question is a dumb question. Um, just raise your hand or say, excuse me, Ms. Bullard, and um, ask away, okay? Discussion based. Okay, so I would have sent um, the attachment. Let me see if I can make this other screen smaller. Can, can everybody see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. I can see it, but the writing is really small. Okay. So let me try and make it larger. Was that better or no? I That probably was worse. Let me see if I can escape. Ms. Bolletti and too technically savvy. So um, I would have sent this to you in an email. So perhaps you can um, pull it up on in the email I sent. If you, if you, is this better on the screen? Was that better? A little yeah. better. Okay, so do you have it in your email? Yes, I do. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. just, pull it up. just pull it up in your email if you can't see the screen. Uh, it's the instruction sheet in the email. So there were three attachments 
in this um, email and we'll go through all of them just to make sure that everybody is clear on what needs to be done. Excuse me, Ms. Okay. Bullard, um, I just joined today, so I didn't get this email. Okay, so Shamara, I just want to shoot it to you quickly. I'll shoot it to you right afterwards. Can you oh, type no your email in the, in the chat for me, please? Yes, ma'am. And right after I go through the explanation, I'll send it on. Okay. Okay? Okay. So you would have all received a textbook from the office. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. Okay, good. Yes. So I didn't get it as yet. So I think I'll get it this week. Okay. Okay, so let me go to I the- I haven't interview. gotten it either. Okay, so make sure you pick it up. Um, the office is normally open from nine to five Monday through through Friday and then tell the one or two on, on Saturday. So you definitely need to, to, to pick up your copy. Okay, okay. Okay, okay so in order to pass this class, um, you have to have an overall passing grade of 70%. Okay, and what we do is we prepare you um, to successfully complete this course by offering homework, offering participation, offering networking, and um, offering you to be able to get into the final exam with 30% before you even take the, the final exam. So how it's broken up is the final exam is 70% of your grade. Then your homework is 20% and participation is 10%, okay? And so that means that once you complete your homework, once you participate in class by reading or participating in the discussion, and once you attend a civic organization, you would be able to successfully enter the final exam with 30%. And even if you don't get full grades or uh, full points on your homework, persons normally get into the final exam with 25 or, or minimum 20 points, very easy to get, okay? And so overall, like I said, the passing grade is 70%. So 20% of your final grade will be homework. And there are four questions listed on the instruction sheet, one, two, three, four, and you are required to choose one of those questions and submit it for homework. Now, each question has a due date, okay? And so we don't accept late homework because if you, know, if you run out of time or you know, this week is just busy for you, just go on to the next question. What I don't encourage persons to do is wait until question four and find out that they don't understand, okay? If you do question one or two, you'll have the opportunity and, and you're off track. Ms. Bullard normally says, let me give you an opportunity to rewrite this. And, and hand it in again, or to make an adjustment and hand, hand it in again. Ms. Bullard, yes? sorry to interrupt, but I see two dates on this. These are holidays. Will the homework still be due on those dates? Yes, unfortunately, two holidays fall into, you know, your classwork. So, yeah, I'm, I, I realize that they, Monday, August 1st, and July 11th were holidays. So, get, you know, and I all about celebrating the holidays, but don't pick those questions. So that'll eliminate question one and question four. So my question to you is, um, how would we submit the homework? You would send it to my email, the email where you would have gotten this um, instruction sheet and the welcome okay. email, you reply right back. And a lot of people send it into the office to Ms. Dean. Ms. Bullitt deals okay. with everything for the class, Anything with payment and books, and that's the office, okay? But okay. homeworks all come in to me. Okay. Okay, okay, good. So it says one essay should be submitted, and these four questions are past exam questions, okay? You may see them up on your final again, you know, because there's a test bank, and we just rotate the questions out of the test bank. So don't be surprised if you see it again. These questions are just for practice. Of course, the, you should know by now, if you would have read this, that the final exam is 15 multiple choice questions and seven essays, okay? And so one or two of these questions may be on your final exam. Nevertheless, it's for practice just to ensure that you understand. Because like I said, compliance is very complex and there's loads of information out there. 
And so you, what we aim to do is scale down that information and make sure that we get full points in our essays, okay? So one essay should be submitted, 1,000 to 1,200 words, and you may say, oh my God, Ms. Bullard, that's a lot. But if you're gonna go to ICA, there is no final exam. There are three essays required on the AML side and three essays required on the governance risk and compliance side, okay? Each one of those essays are 3,500 words, okay? So this is just to prepare you for what ICA expects, okay? So again, a lot of persons may, like uh, one of the ladies, I don't have all the names yet, I, I have my bachelor's degree. You may have done that bachelor's degree 10 years ago, okay? You may need a refresher on how to write essays. This is not an English class. And so Ms. Ms. Bullard normally gets a thousand questions on APA, MLA, and referencing and all these things. You have to take college prep English if you need a refresher in how to write an essay. But it must be in pro proper um, form. It must be, you know, introduction, body, and conclusion. I have also attached the ICA homework. I mean, sorry, handbook. And it's very lengthy. And we, you know, we don't want expect you to read the entire book, but I, I ask you to go to pages 17 and 19. And I want you to read on how they reference. So let's look for page 17 and 19. And like I say, you can read the entire handbook, but I don't want you to get overwhelmed with reading. But on these pages, it tells you the ICA standard of referencing. And you may say, Ms. Bullard, why is this important? It's important because in ICA, your papers are marked in London and persons have failed because they did not reference properly, okay? So when you're using somebody's work, you have to say, according to the Nassau Guardian, according to the encyclopedia, uh, according to Wikipedia and the date, and you have to cite it properly. We don't want you to copy and paste any information because you don't get any points for that. We don't want you to um, cite large pieces of law because you don't get any, any, you know, you could say according to the proceeds of crime act section five and that's it. But if you go and copy and paste the whole section five to make up words, you don't get any points, okay? And so ICA, ICA has a system. I, I can't ever pronounce the word of the system, but I think you call it turtin. And what you do is you upload your paper into the system. And that system tells you 5% of your work came from this source, 5% of your work came from another person's paper, 5% of your work came from wherever it came from, okay? And then it gives you a percentage. And if your percentage goes up to 50%, then you fail and you would have written a 3,500 word paper and before they even look at it, you fail, okay? So referencing is very important. And so I asked you to read these two pages and find out exactly what their standard is and, and make sure that you practice from now to reference properly, okay? A lot of persons just jump into the essay. They read another essay somewhere else and they copy and paste and they just send it into Ms. Bullard and they fail, okay? On the other hand, persons who decide that, oh, I'm gonna do terrorist financing, and we discussed that in class one. Let me go and listen to the recording from class one and make sure I get all the right points and not copy and paste. I read what the book says and I put it in my own words. They, those persons can get 100% easily, okay? So no copy and paste, reference proper, properly, use the word count, and I normally give more points for real life examples. So if we, we talk about the placement stage and we can give a real life example, in this case, the person walked into the bank and placed the money into the um, financial institution on this particular day and they were charged with money laundering. If we can specifically give a real life case, that then proves your understanding. And a lot of persons have a good memory. We're not testing memory, we're testing comprehension. Okay, prove to me that you understand. Okay, and if you don't understand, please stop me 
and ask me as an bullet, explain that again, or give me an, another example, or let's go over that. Okay, because we want you to leave here comprehending. Okay, not remembering what Ms. Bullet said. Ms. Bullet, I have a question. Go what ahead. If we do um, one of the, the questions for the homework and we don't do as well as we would like to. Could we do another one? This is how it works. If, if you get less than 70% mm -hmm. on question one or two, Ms. Bullard will give you the opportunity to rewrite that if you get less than 70%. Okay. If you wait till the end and you do questions three or four, then you don't get a chance. Okay. Okay. And all of this is discretionary. I used to, you know, give a lot of concessions. However, I was reported based on the concessions I gave and I had millions of complaints. And so all of it had to be taken away. You know, persons were sending in late papers after the class had finished after the final exam when they felt like they failed, you know, so all the um, concessions were taken away. So the innocent suffering for the guilty. Okay. Okay. But I do recommend that in your spare time, you do jot, you know, look at the questions and make sure that you can answer them. Okay. Because a lot of times, like I say, persons put in too much invalid information that they don't get any points for. So make sure you understand the question, what it is asking. Sometimes there are two or three parts, like question two, discuss the objectives. So we would expect three or four objectives of terrorists. Then describe three ways in which they fund their activities. Okay? So make sure you, un you know, understand what the question is asking and answer the full question and then you can get full points. Okay, any questions regarding the homework? Are we clear? We see the due dates. We can organize ourselves to ensure that we have sufficient time to submit? Yes. Okay, and you'll get your grade one, one week after um, you would have submitted, so you submit on that Friday, on that Monday, you the following, um, I guess, Sunday evening or Monday, you will get your grade. Okay, so that's that's your homework, and that's how you get your twenty percent. Um, like I said, some persons decide that oh, I'm a scholar, I'm a straight A student, I don't have to do homework. Um, in the last six years, we have had only one person get a full hundred percent on the final exam. So I wouldn't chance it because the final, like I said, is only 70% of your grade. And so therefore you would have to get a hundred percent if you do not do your homework. So please do your homework and sit comfortably in the final. Okay. And then it's um, participation. And like I said, it requires you to be in attendance. So I know a lot of persons say, oh, Miss Bullet, I just listen to the recording. But if you listen to all the recordings, that means you would not have participated in class. And so you can't expect to get a participation point. Okay? Um, these questions, um, and even the book, once we read it, requires research. It requires you to read. Like I said, compliance is a very complex area of the financial services sector. It requires you to read, it requires you to be organized, it requires you to do research. Okay, and so each um, person I ask as compliance officers, you read the newspaper every day. Okay, and, and not the comics, not the sports section, but the business section. Okay, and you, you come to class and you share with the, with the class what you would have read in the newspaper. And believe it or not, each morning as the compliance officer, the CEO comes downstairs to my office and they, they want to have um, what a cool conversation, Ms. Bullet, what happened in the news? What do you think about the new commission of the police? What do you think about what's happening in Ukraine? And Ms. Bullet, can I say Ukraine? I've never been there before. Or oh, the commission of police, JJ. No, you, you should be, you know, information seeking and, and um, knowledgeable of what's happening in your country and any other countries that you work with. And so most of my career was in offshore. And so we dealt with Brazil and with London and with um, Switzerland. And so what I do is I subscribed to
to various newspapers through my Facebook page so I can see the highlights. Okay, so if you deal with countries, then subscribe. You should know what's happening in some of the time in, in various countries that you deal with. Um, go ahead, Lenny. What if we, what if I, what if I, okay, is reading the newspaper, okay, I can read the newspaper, what if I was already watch the news a lot? That's fine. That wouldn't count? Yeah, the same thing within the news in the newspaper, so that's okay. fine. So if you okay. watch it on CNN and Fox and all those various things or eyewitness news, then that's fine. Yeah, I watch the news a lot, but I need to get into the habit of reading anyway, so right. I may yeah. just read Practice. the newspaper. And believe yeah. it or not, Ms. Bullet does not like to read, but I have to. I've made a career decision or a career choice yeah. that I have to read. And so sometimes, you know, you have to find something to motivate you. Right. So, right. Okay. So it's definitely not that I like to read. It's because I had to. And it, it, <laughs> I'm motivated by, you know, the position or the level of, uh, of money I could make at a particular level in my institution. So I'm not doing it because I like I do it because of the benefits of it, right? So you have to be, like I say, information seeking and knowledgeable. And as compliant, they expect you to know everything, right? And so know, know some things. They can't come to your office every day and you say, I don't know, I don't know, okay? And again, okay. you in the conversations that you have in, you know, they ain't talking about fish fry or getting some salad from under the dock or what you're wearing. You know, they're talking about the news, the world, and, and various stuff like that. Okay? So I ask each of you, wherever you work, um, subscribe to your regulator. And I'm just going to show you, um, most of us work in, in banks. So the central bank of the Bahamas is your, your regulator. Um, they have a very, very um, informative site. This is their website. Um, they have all sorts of speeches, blogs, videos, all these things you can use in your homework. Um, there are updates um, every day. They, you see, they even have something for high school for preparing for BGCSE and what students could do to assist them. Um, at the bottom, you scroll all the way down to the bottom and there's a enter your email address. And that's where you would enter your email address to subscribe to their publications. Okay, and these are their daily publications. So as my job as a compliance officer, what I have to do is every day, I have to look at these publications. And if there's a publication that's, um, you know, for the finance department, I send it to the finance department. If it's for a, a new updated law, I send it to all the um, departments that it's applicable to, okay? And I'm duly regulated by both the Central Bank and the Securities Commission, and so I have to do that for both sides. And, you know, I did just did that because I have to advise the board. And what I didn't know is that Central Bank has this as a requirement for um, financial um, institutions. And so the other day I had an audit and the person from Central Bank said, could you please show me where you've been disseminating information through your institution? And I was like, really, you, you wanna check that? They say, yes, you are the liaison person between the regulator and the institution. And we need to know that you are advising them. I said, well, of course I advise them. And they said, show me proof. And so I had to go through all of my emails and show them where I would have disseminated the information from the regulator throughout my organization, or I would have gotten an audit note, okay? So as compliance officers, this is one of our functions, disseminating information through the organization, okay? So please, whomever is your regulator, this is um, like the central bank website. Like I say, very informative. And if you work in um, compliance, it's it's a requirement, okay? Um, like I said, I'm duly regulated, so I have to also subscribe all the way down and subscribe to the Securities um, Commission. And again, each when once you subscribe, they send all of this information into 
your email box. So you don't necessarily have to visit their site each day. And I also teach ICA and in the ICA book, there's a, there was a question, do compliance officers, are they ready for new technology? And, you know, there's a lot of artificial intelligence, cryptocurrency, um, digital assets um, right now. And, and compliance officers, they don't know about it. And so you want to ensure that even if you are not regulated by the Securities Commission, they have a fintech hub. And so this fintech hub, if you just go to the Securities Commission and put in fintech hub, it shows you all of the you know, the contact information, questions and answers about the DARE bill, about crowdfunding and all the new technology, all about artificial in intelligence. And so as these new products and services are coming on stream, as compliance officers, we don't want to get left behind. We must know the risk associated with these new products and services. And so um, follow the um, Securities Commission, follow the FinTech Hub. And just as the central bank has, um, you know, all the publications, so does the Securities Commission. There are various speeches and presentations. Um, there are, there's a newsroom. Um, there are education and media. And so all sorts of um, readings as well as videos to, give you insight about you know, ver various risks or anything about the Bahamas and all the digital assets. So like I said, if in your spare time, get, you know, keep abreast of what's happening. Um, somebody said they worked the Sunshine Insurance. Um, I don't know if you would have saw this internally, but you should read this, you know, what's going on in your industry or in your um, institution. And I was so just about to ask, um who who know who, who who would you recommend? What site would you recommend for the insurance sector? Right, the insurance commission. It's right there too. Insurance. Yeah, I've never really visited their site, so, so again, same it. same thing, and they have a very um, informative site as well. Um, all their media, yeah, I guess. I clicked on media, a lot of stuff didn't come up, but there are, uh, you can go through it and see. But why, what I did is I attached the central bank guidelines because the central bank, you know, there's always been banks regulated in Obama. So the central bank is like the oldest regulator. And what I found is that um, each regulator just copies the relevant parts of the central bank guidelines and whatever is applicable to them. And so the insurance commission has um, all of the KYC and money laundering aspects and then rules regarding insurance. The same yes. thing with the Securities Commission. All the KYC information is the same and then the rules regarding um, gaming or securities or whatever. So I, I normally use the central bank guidelines as a guide because I always worked in banks to you know, help persons to understand how to read um, you know, policy and procedure, okay? So I have a list and, and there are any, you know, any, um, what I'd say organization, um, I say follow them. There's um, the Bahamas Association of Compliance Officers and that's BACO and you can join now as a student they have an application form. Um, um, there's the Financial Action Task Force. They just updated their um, website as well as the FIU and the Bahamas updated their website. Loads of information um, and trainings out there. And any other applicable website, there's the Attorney General Office that, that's developing their the compliance department. And so, you know, you can follow them. Um, they have lots of industry briefings. They have um, lots of trainings, lunch and learns. And a lot of time persons, you know, institutions just want to be good citizens, right? Socially. And so they buy 10 seats to the lunch and learn and nobody goes. And so I always tell my students, use this as an opportunity. Yeah, institution already paid. Nobody's going to go. So you dress up in your suit and you look nice and you, you introduce yourself and you network. 
and that's where you move, meet the movers and shakers of, of the various institutions. Okay, because CEOs are there and all the executives are there and other compliance officers are there. Okay, and the final 5% is networking. Um, I ask you to attend Toastmasters, Rotary, or Kiwanis, or any meeting, like I said, industry briefing, and you introduce yourself. Once you introduce yourself, you come back and you tell the class what you um, would have experienced. Toastmasters normally has a word for the day. You could tell us the word for the day. And you don't have to you know, be concerned about what their topic is. Whatever their topic is at this time is fine. The other day, somebody went to um, a Toastmasters meeting and the topic was backyard gardening and sustainability. And, and that was fine, okay? But what is important is that you go share with the class and you come back and you get your 5%. And normally the first half an hour of class, you know, because the persons do tend to come late. We, we talk about what happened in the newspaper. We talk about networking. We talk about, um, you know, what we saw in the news and from our subscriptions on, on, and you follow all these people on social media as well. And of course, you know, social media is a big thing today. So you wanna follow these persons. So networking is very important. Um, we are all human beings and people simply go with who they know, you know? So at the end of this class, all of us are gonna be qualified. All of us will successfully complete the introduction to compliance and anti-money laundering. What would make us stand out? What would make us stand out, okay? So what would make each of us stand out is that we know each other. I was the first person that read in class and Ms. Bullard remembered me. I saw Ms. Bullard at this conference and, and, and now, I, you know, she at least has a name to the face. Go ahead, um, Pratt. Hi, okay. I, it may be a little bit too late for this, right? I'm just saying, like, I did some certificates on like business management, but nothing is step in depth like compliance. You suggest me doing something so complex now, or you suggest I take other courses before I get in depth inside this course because this course is really <laughs> it's, and you're not um, overwhelmed, and it's just yeah. the first day, right? <laughs> yeah. I know, and, and, and I'm going. I'm not going to downplay it. It is a lot of work. It is overwhelming, and and um but it's achievable, you know? If you can read and comprehend, you'll be okay. This um, compliance training is required by all that work in the financial services sector. Where, where do you work? Telsec Bank and Trust. Okay, so you, you should be here because this is equivalent to the, it's, a, it's not really equivalent, but it's a step above what um, you learn in your annual training each year, okay? And this is truly the basis. So if you, or the foundation, I should say, if you work in a financial institution, at minimum, this is the minimum that you should know, okay? So try it for, you know, this class and next class, and then, then you make the decision. So call Ms. Dean and just make sure you can, get a refund if you need one. But if you work in a financial institution, you can go to jail. So okay. it's best that you learn the basics that you need to, to be able to survive. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Great, okay, so 5% attend Toastmasters. And again, like I say, the movers and shakers and, and corporate Bahamas is not out to the dock. They ain't out to fish fry. Uh, they ain't taking a picture of their clothes or for the date, okay? They are these institutions brainstorming, getting to know new people, networking, training, okay? And so to develop yourself corporately, uh, to go on your development journey, I would, you know, suggest that you attend one of these, network, introduce yourself, and get to know the right people. So once you are qualified, I'd be like, oh yeah, I know Pratt, Pratt was in my class. Oh, she's already qualified. Yes, and I and I she's in the network. Okay. So put yourself out there and network. And even in Canada, you know, um, because I worked most of my career was with the Royal Bank um trust company. And in Canada, um, 
you know, my colleagues are telling me that the entry, entry level staff are complaining that, you know, they've been a teller for four years and there's no moving up and only the same people move up every time. And so they are, you know, each executive has to mentor somebody in the entry level positions to introduce them to, I guess, their peers and their networking settings to ensure that when positions come available, they are known and they can move up. And, and that's Canada. So imagine us here in, in, in the little Bahamas with friends, lovers, and families. Okay, so we, we have that same problem. Okay, and then the final exam said 70% already of the grade from Tuesday, August the 9th, 15 multiple choice questions and seven essay questions. It sounds like a lot, but it's definitely achievable. And like I said, once you work in the financial services sector, I, this is like the minimum amount of information you should know to protect yourself. Hi, then, excuse me, Balan. Go ahead. So even me as a new mom, you would recommend that I continue this course? Um, Jamie, there's no good time to do anything in life. Because after you uh, raise this child, something else is going to happen. Work is going to be a pressure. You know, you, you have to decide that I, I need to further my education. I mean, I think that's why you're here. Now, whether it's compliance or not, I, you know, you'd have to make that de determination. It, it's I, totally up to you. I have a an associate's degree in business management already. And I also had an interest in HR, but I know compliance is where the money is, to be honest. And so, okay. yeah. And so you, you, you just, it, it's called, it calls for sacrifice. That's no my matter where you go. But if you plan to, you know, excel and you can excel with an associate's degree, but okay. you know, your pay will be based on your, associates to do. If yes, you want to go further, you have to do a little more. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so it's, it's, it's a sacrifice. Yes, and I encourage all of you to, you know, you are here already. You already get all this information. Like I said, it's achievable. If you need more time, if Ms. Bullitt needs to slow down, you, you let me know what you need. But I don't, I, I can't encourage anybody to quit. I can only say after the five weeks, please decide, you know, if compliance is not for you, I wouldn't encourage you to go on to intermediate, but I would encourage you to still stay and find out what is the next step in your career and, and how can you develop yourself. Okay, because you just, you have to do it. Okay. Yeah, and there won't ever be a good time. Okay, o Opal, you have a question? Yes, mom, you had brought up the exam, um, just going over the 15 multiple choice and the seven essay questions. The seven essay questions will require us to write 1,000 to 1,200 words as well? No, it'll only be one. Again, this is just because um, this is for practice for ICA, because like it requires you three essays on each side. In the exam, you write one pages or one and a half. Each exam question is worth 10 points. This is because this is open book and, and, and you have the internet and can do research. In the exam, you won't have that. So in the exam is closed book. And so therefore just a one page of with, with 10 relevant points, no more than two pages. Okay, thank you. Okay. Also, Ms. Bullard, one more question. Um, I know you said that we have a particular amount of words to write. Um, will points be deducted if we go over the, okay, so, the word house? Yeah, so ICA says it gives you 10% grace. Okay, so you could go 10% below the word count or 10% above the word count. But I, I want you to practice sticking to the rules because when you go to ICA, there's no concessions. You upload into your computer and that's it. You know, so practice following their standards, you know, from the onset. And, and when you get there, it will be easier. Yes, ma'am. Okay, great.
Okay. Any any other questions? Um, I just wanted to know where would we set the final exam? At at the institute where you would have collected your book. Okay. Yeah. You return to Miss Dean and, and you'll set the final there. And would it have to be like um through the, it would have to be in the day then? No, it'll be Tuesday, six to nine. Okay. Yeah. And so what I encourage each person is um speak to your institutions, find out if they give you study leave and put the study leave, you already know when the exam date is. They normally give you two days, put in study leave. Or if there's a family responsibility leave, take the family responsibility leave. Or if they don't offer you it at all, speak to your supervisor and see if at minimum you could get a half day. Because okay. I found that a lot of persons come into the exam overwhelmed and rushed. They just pick up the children from school. They just fight the traffic and it's a timed exam. And so, you know, it's three hours and person said, oh, that's three hours, but it's seven essays. That's a lot to do. You have like 20 minutes to write each essay. So please find out if you get study leave from now and organize it to make sure nobody else takes it for like vacation. Okay, any questions or concerns? No, ma'am. No, Lord, y'all sound sad. You're like, Miss Bullet. Miss Bullet, you just ruined my day. Talk back to me. Give me, give me some feedback. Let me give and a, uh, sorry. I want to give a word of encouragement. Um, uh, I notice that a lot of persons are younger than I am. But to the new mom, can I tell you that I started doing my accounts um, studies when my second child was months old and I, I thought that I was going to fail that class. However, I came out with a, I think I passed with an 83 or close, something like that. And that was 19 years ago. So you just have to take it one day at a time and just don't like Miss Bullard say, don't be overwhelmed. You know what I mean? Just take it one day at a time. And don't beat yourself up too much, but you have to start somewhere. Yeah. Okay, Latoya, th thank thank you so much for that, and and you know let's keep each other um in, encouraged. Um, normally I my classes each day have a WhatsApp group. Now Miss Bullet was in fifty WhatsApp groups, so I normally don't join the WhatsApp group any longer. But normally there's somebody who already attends Toastmasters or Rotary and they put information in the group or they would have studied, they came across a body of work and they they put the information in the group. And it really helps um, to join forces with somebody, you know, to study together, um, to keep each other encouraged. Because like I said, it, it life is tough. No, no matter what you're doing, if you want to excel, it, it's not going to be easy, but it's definitely going to be worth it. Okay, and all of our laws would have changed in 2018. And it's just in the financial services sector, it's too risky to be working without the proper knowledge and the proper education. Okay, it's too risky. We can now go to jail. Before it used to just be the compliance officer going to jail, everybody can go to jail. Okay, so we have, we don't want to take it lightly. You have to be able to protect yourself and know what, you know, what is right from wrong. Okay, so if you're interested in um, being in the WhatsApp group and you want to network with each other and keep each other encouraged and, and um, share information, then um, just raise your hand and then we'll have somebody volunteer to be the administrator and then we'll go from there. So. You can just raise your hand if you are interested and, and let's see how much chance we get and then we'll go from there. I don't mind participating in the WhatsApp group. Okay. Okay, good. So we have a few, does anybody um, want to be the administrator? Is anybody good at that and, and wants to be the administrator? Uh, I'll do it. Okay. And um, that's Lenny. Uh, okay. Y'all could just, I guess, put your number in the chat 
and I'll create the group from there. Okay, excellent. And again, um, thank you so much, Lanique, um, for stepping forth and, and, and supporting. And again, like I said, it helps. Um, definitely the people who are on this journey going all the way to ICA, um, yeah, sit together and it'll make it so much easier. Okay. Ms. Bullard, yes. I have one more question. Yes, um, so with the final, we have a few essays to write. Um, I guess we're not expected to cite sources. Is it like knowledge or? Yeah. So again, like we are comprehending, right? And right. so we're checking comprehension. So you would say, according to the Nassau Guardian, or definitely one of the questions that you did for homework, you would have mm -hmm. already done in-depth research for your homework. So you, you would say, use the cases that you use from the homework, you know, to answer that question. And there would be um, word counts as well? Like would be, would no, be a no. Remember I said one pages. No, one and a, one and a half page on the final. Okay. No word. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's going to be cloudy for the next two classes. And I promise you, right, it, it's going to sink in and, and you will make the decision whether you want to go further or not. But definitely, I, I promise you, you'll just, just hang in there and you'll find it worthwhile. Because like I said, once you work in the financial services sector, what you learn in this class is the minimum required. Okay, so, so speak to your families, speak to work, just ask, don't be afraid to ask for help. Okay. Okay, all right. Okay, guys, very good. Okay, so we see some numbers coming in, so very good. And, and just try to um, support each other and all, all that makes it easier. Okay? Okay, so we would uh, um, be clear on, on the requirements of the class. Right? And we know that we only need to read those two pages on how to reference. Now we can talk about the central bank guidelines. And so let me just give you an um, overview of, of compliance and where it started. Um, back in 2000, I don't know if any of you remember, some of you might never even been born in 2000, but back in 2000, um, the Bahamas was blacklisted um, by an international regulator called the Financial Action Task Force. And what the Financial Action Task Force did was create international laws that they wanted countries to implement into their country to help fight money laundering and terrorism financing, and then proliferation, which is now against the weapons of mass destruction and what have you, right? And so what they did is they joined forces with the OECD, the IMF, and all these Basel Committee, um, different regulators, and they said, if countries do not implement these into laws, um, we will say they're non-cooperative and we will blacklist them, okay? So of course, you know, with the financial services sector being our second industry in the Bahamas, we cannot afford to be blacklisted because blacklisting means that other countries cannot do business with you, okay? It, we suffer a lot of reputational risks and normally um, when countries... Um, decide whether or not they're going to, or investors decide if they're going to invest in your country, they definitely look at um, any risk that you pose to their business. Okay, so being blacklisted, we suffered a lot of reputational risk, so it's not good to the country. However, regulation is very expensive. Okay, hiring a compliance department is very expensive. Like I said, um, compliance is very complex area of the bank or the financial institution, you have to ensure that the whole institution is compliant, right? So you have to know or have a good relationship with the credit officer, with the finance officer, with HR to ensure that they are doing what they ought to do or they are following the laws, okay? So in 2000, we were blacklisted. The FATF came out with 40 recommendations. And let me just show you, um, as you get to intermediate, 
then you'll go more in depth with the 40 recommendations. But just to give you a visual in case you've never seen the 40 recommendations before, I'll pull it up. So we'll understand what, what they were asking, what the ask was of the country. Like I said, put, it, put these um, recommendations in place. So these are the 40 recommendations. And so anytime you look at a body of um, you know, information or a, a, a writing, look at the date, because this has been revised a few times. And so what, if you look at the old version, you'll end up quoting the wrong recommendation. And normally when you go to Google and you're doing research, the old version comes up first. So always look to make sure that you're using the most current version, because as laws change, these recommendations change as well. So these are what the 40 recommendations look like. And always go to the table of contents because like I said, th I think this is about 200 pages. You don't need to be overwhelmed reading 200 pages. We just look in um, for money laundering and confiscation. So you go right there and you read those or on preventative measures or customer due diligence. Okay, and so these are the numbers. And as you can see, these are the old numbers. So recommendation two used to be recommendation 31, but now it's recommendation two. And so that's the importance of ensuring that you check the date because I had persons write a 3,500 word page on the wrong recommend, you know, essay, sorry, on the wrong recommendation. So always check the date, okay? So these are what the 40 recommendations look like. And out of the 40 recommendations from recommendation 10 all the way to 24, all that deals with customer due diligence, okay? record keeping, ensuring um, that you check the information that the customer would have given you. So let's just look at recommendation one. And again, just for a visual, what does recommendation one say? Countries should assess their risk. So assessing risk and applying a risk-based approach. Countries should identify, assess, and understand money laundering and terrorist financing risk. They should put controls in place to protect their organization or their country against um, you know, these risks, okay? And so to make sure that no terrorist or no money launderer could infiltrate their system, okay? So they came up with these 40 things that the Bahamas should do. But in order to put these recommendations in place, or when we put these recommendations in place, it made our financial services sector less attractive to the outside world. Because of course we know prior to this, we were seen as a tax haven. And what a tax haven is, is that in America, in Canada, they require between 10 and 35% and taxes out of your salary each month, even though they already take in social service and other taxes, they also take income tax. And so therefore, um, you know, persons, decide that even though I'm American, I'm gonna put my money in a tax jurisdiction or a tax haven. And so therefore, um, this these laws prevented us from being a tax haven. These laws say that even if I'm an American or I'm from Switzerland, the Bahamas must then tell America and must tell Switzerland that their citizen has this money here and still pay their 30% tax, okay? And so once we put that into law, of course, Many persons close out their accounts because they said, what's the use being in the Bahamas if I still have to pay the tax to the country? I might as well keep that tax in my country or I might as well keep my money in my own country. And so therefore, um, a lot of businesses, a lot of banks closed down, a lot of financial institutions could simply not survive because they lost a lot of customers when we updated our laws. So <clears throat> even though we were blacklisted, <clears throat> The Bahamas put in a shell of legislation that really <clears throat> couldn't hold any ground in court. Therefore, um, even though we lost some, we didn't you know, lose the majority of banks. However, the FATF came back and they saw that, hey, um, there are still some loopholes in the system. Um, they are still more competitive than other nations. And so we are going to blacklist them again. And so over the years, we've been um, blacklisted a few times. However, like I said, the Bahamas had to take a staggered approach or it would just simply wipe out 
the financial services sector because laws are expensive to implement them. You are the, you know, you are the higher, a top tier person to be the compliance officer. You have to pay for training every year. You need systems to support, um, you know, this compliance department. And the IRS spent like $18 million to, you know, be able to collect these taxes. And if the IRS, which is the, you know, for the US, it, it, what is it? Internal Reserve, um, whoever collect, like our Ministry of Finance, um, if they spend $18 million, they definitely was going to make three or four times that much. However, we are the Bahamas, much smaller country. We don't have $18 million just to implement one system. And so therefore, you know, it banks simply closed down because they could not afford it. Okay. So this is what the 40 recommendations look like. And this is what we had to put into our Bahamian law. Okay, after the 40 recommendations, and let's look at the central bank. Are there any questions or are these just persons who want to be in the, the group? Okay, so you can lower your hand, please, if you only wanted to be in the group. Okay. Are we, are we clear so far about the, the history? Yes, Toy, okay. All right, I just want you all to stop me if, if it's, it's not getting clear. And so therefore, um, like I said, we put a shell of the law in place hope, with hopes that we could get like these international regulators off our backs and that they would leave us alone for a while, which they did. However, over the years, they, you know, blacklisted us here and there and we, you know, changed the little thing to satisfy them. But in 2017, they did a full mutual evaluation report where they checked every single recommendation to make sure that we had implemented. And so what we did in, um, can you all still see the screen? Oh, mom. No? Okay. Um, wow. Thank you. Okay. So with these 40 recommendations, what we did was create and let me just show you these laws in, they're not the laws, these laws in regards to um, anti-money laundering and terrorist financing, because we didn't want to seem as we were a non-cooperative jurisdiction in the fight against money laundering. Okay, so these laws were created. Um, however, like I said, just the shell and because we didn't want to wipe out the industry and we, you know, given persons time to adapt because uh, if you've been open for 30 years and now all these new laws come in place, a lot of institutions didn't simply believe that they really had to put all these laws in place. They really had to make all these changes that there would be somebody checking to make sure that they were compliant. Okay. And so after that big report in 218, they really slammed us out and they said, listen, it's been 18 years. We give you all to put these laws in place. They now need to be enforced. And so this is why I'm saying this is the minimum amount of information you should know if you work in the financial services sector. Because in 2018, the central bank then created an analytics department. The Securities Commission created one and each regulator did create an analytics department so they could have a hands on approach with each bank. And so gone are the days where, you know, you get a little slap on the wrist like central bank had written me up in 2008, and then I didn't even see them for another six years. So of course, you know, Ms. Bullard was overwhelmed and overworked without a work. So I was even checking for Central Bank and I know they wasn't coming back. However, most recently after 218, when they asked me for some information, they called me the next day and said, Ms. Bullard, the information. I was like, what y'all doing? Y'all don't, you know, y'all don't call me. But they now have an officer attached to each financial institution who they call every day, they check every day, they enforce, okay? And they have no choice or the Bahamas itself will be blacklisted, okay? And so that's how compliance was born. And so now we have full compliance departments. Um, no financial institution can get a business license without an MLRO on, 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 on staff. And that's a money laundering reporting officer. 
okay? And so most recently, accounting firms, law firms, um, broker dealers were, are now regulated by the Compliance Commission, not broker dealers, sorry, accounting firms, law firms, and real estate agents. And so these are not like the little winky dinky ones are the ones that do criminal law, who, you know, protecting the armed robbers and the, the murderers, but the, the large heads in John sense, the KPMG is the Deloitte and Touche, the, the Mario Carey, because they, they have financial services licenses and they offer account openings to, or they manage account openings for their clients. And so therefore they are now regulated. And so in 2019, they could not get their licenses renewed if they did not have a full compliance department and an MLRO on, on, on staff, okay? And the MLRO is a regulated function. And what that means is that you can put an ad in the paper, you can say, oh, Ms. Bullitt, I'm gonna interview you and we have successfully chosen you. However, you have to apply for um, to the regulator and ask the regulator's approval to hire Ms. Bullitt as the MLRO. So you have to send your resume, um, you have to send two bank, bank references, two character references, your passport, what have you. You have to send a private number outside of the bank that they can call you on and a private um, email outside of the bank that they can call you on. You also have to send um, directions to your home. Okay, and they do a full background check on you. And there have been many people that have not been opposed. So they wanna make sure that you have enough experience and enough um, educational background in order for you to become the MLRO. There are three regulated functions in each financial institution. A senior official one, who is normally the CEO. Senior official two, who is normally the CFO or the HR person and then there's the MLRO. And we are all here today because like I said, this is a minimum requirement for anybody that works in the financial services sector, or we hope to one day become money laundering reporting officers. Okay. Now, once the regulator would have approved you, then you register with the financial action, um, sorry, the financial intelligence unit and they receive suspicious transactions for investigation, okay? So is, is that clear? Um, any questions or feedback about the history? I'm good. You good? Okay, Jamie, you still have your hand raised. Do you wanna ask a question? No, ma'am, I'm good. I, I, I have to learn to, how to put that down. Um, okay. Okay. Okay, good. All right, guys. So that's just a little history um, so you would understand. Um, we can look at the book. And the book, um, like I said, it's only eight chapters. Each of the chapters are two pages. And two to three pages the most. Some may be five, one chapter may be five. So this is considered very, very minimal reading. And, and this is why I say at the end of this class, you can decide if you wanna go on further or this is the end of the road for you. But even if it's the end of the road, whatever field, you know, you must choose a career path. And if it's credit, please get into some credit courses. If it's um, finance or HR, get into those courses. I most recently had to open an account with Wells Fargo in the US, um, at least my institution did. And one of the requirements of Wells Fargo was that they see my resume and they wanted to determine whether I had sufficient experience or sufficient um, educational background in order to open this account for my institution, okay? Not only that, they called back and they said, and this was in 2020, Ms. Bullard, what trainings have you been to this year? And I said, well, it's a pandemic. <laughs> you know, all the trainings are, can are canceled. And they said, have you not been to any online? So I said, yes, of course. And they said, please send us your CPD hours. 
And had I not had that, my institution would not have been able to open that account, okay? Had I not had sufficient uh, educational background or um, experience on my resume, my institution would not have been able to open that account. So what y'all think would have happened to Ms. Bully? Locked up. <laughs> <laughs> no, they wouldn't lock me up, but they would have saved me. You wouldn't have been far from oh, this. Just getting fired. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I would have been home, right? I would have been home because they would have said, Ms. Bullet, we need somebody who's more qualified. We need this account open. Okay, so don't get caught in that position where um, they ask you for your credentials and the, the, the company suffers because you're not fully qualified. You, you know, and that's another right. reason why I, yes, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Like, okay, with your position, does your company give you like certain, I guess, things that you have to attend or you do them on your own? Yeah, but I am responsible for training for everybody. And so I, I do them on my own, but the company pays, okay? And on my membership, the company pays for, if I have to travel, they pay. So oh. I would recommend, um, like when I audit a, a department, the first thing I do is ask for everybody's resume, mm. okay? And if there's not sufficient experience or um, knowledge, then I say, you have to send DeAndre to a class. Okay. You have two years. Yeah, and, and so that is good that you are here and not be caught in that because that's the way all auditors are, or compliance professionals are checking now. If you you have to have sufficient, your cousin might have given you this job or your church member, yeah. but please, like I upgrade yourself, make sure you're not one of the persons. And I have persons who are VPs who you be forcing to get in class. Wow. Yeah. So don't wait. Don't wait till somebody makes you do it. Okay. Okay. I know life is very tough, but don't, don't wait. Okay. So make sure sufficient education, sufficient experience. For the position that you hold. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay, Miss Bullet is long winded. You're you're at a stop high school south. Where we was here's in the book. <laughs> here's in the book. Okay, so well, so the book, like I said, two to three pages each chapter. Please read the chapters before you come to class and, and come prepared to talk as Miss Bullet but before the sleep right now. If you find it difficult reading these two chapters, then definitely don't go on to intermediate just intermediate will have five pages or six pages sometimes ten okay if you can't read those five or six pages please don't go on the ICA each chapter is a minimum of 50 pages okay and so please, you say 50 or 50 50 five zero five zero oh most, okay most chapters are 70 pages or 80 pages all Again, right. this is achievable, Lanique. Lanique, you already tell me you all the way to the end. No, I hear. I wish you. No turning back. I hear. I hear. I just get in. I just get in my information correct. Yeah, brace yourself. But you, Miss Puller could be here with you along the way. You, you could do this, okay? Once you believe okay. it, it, it's achievable. It's a lot, but it's achievable, and it'll be worth it. So, Ms. Bullard, that'll be the, the part three of this course, and that's where you would have the six papers to write, correct? Correct. Okay. And those papers are marked in London, and that's where you upload it to that system. By the time okay. we get there, y'all will know every day. Y'all will know how to do it. No worries. Ms. Bullard, question, yeah. right? Yes. I can't swap the HR tomorrow, right? <laughs> <laughs> You speak to Miss Dean. Speak to Miss Dean. Amy, where you where you going? I mean, Kenisha, where you going? Girl, I go. Mm -mm. <laughs> Amy, you can do it. Let's go. You can I'm, do it. I'm not, saying, it. I'm not saying I can't do it, but I have to face reality. And reality for me right now, my baby is super active. I can't do no, I could barely read the Bible with her right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so, you don't have you don't have anybody to keep a, a want to be. Yes, actually, I she goes to my sister during the day, but I don't want to put that extra load on her. Like it's complicated. I rather go to I mean, HR. 
Well, okay. But okay, but even if you say, go to Jamie, even if you go to HR, you still need somebody to keep her during class. Even if you go to HR, would HR be on during Zoom too? Yeah, that's fine. But in terms of reading five to ten pages and all that. You That's can do it. Jamie, you can do that. Put the baby to sleep one hour. You can do it. I did it last night. You can do it. Put My baby. Sleep. Can I type a baby on? No, she in there. She, okay, Jamie. I, I mean, yeah, I have two. I have two babies. One four and one one. And I just have to make the sacrifice and stay up. Even if you stay up like 30 minutes or wake up 30 minutes early or hour earlier than you normally do. Just to read a couple of pages like... Even if you go to HR, if that's what you want to do, fine. But I just saying, everything would be like, you will have to make a sacrifice to read. Yeah. You will have to make a sacrifice to do the homework. You have, to, but it's just remember, it's only for a season, and your baby can be small, long. Yeah. So. Correct. I mean, but, just uh, wait. I know everybody's and, and, situation and, different. Yeah. I could ask a question, Miss yeah. Bella. Do you have mm -hmm. intermediate HR classes as well? No, I, I'm not certain how HR runs, but I, it's, I don't think it's in levels like this. Yeah, because when I, I looked at the schedule and I saw that you offer just an intro to HR, but I don't see an intermediate. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I know there are other levels. Um, I, I'm not certain if the, the institute offers that. Okay. Yeah, but I you, can don't, you, can you can speak I don't charge my card, so... <laughs> but then you I, better stay. Jim, hey, better stay. stick it out. Stick, stick it out. out. Yeah, stick it out. I, I promise you, this five weeks will blow over. Like, it's just never happened. Before you blink, it'll, it'll be. And let, let, once you see us go to chapter one and two, I, you know, you was, it, it, it's manageable. I sorry that I scared you all right up front, but you, you could do this. It's definitely achievable. Just trust me. Okay? And, and, and let me tell you, Miss Bullet, I, I I truly understand what you're going through because I I've had two jobs my entire life and I, mm -hmm. I raised five kids. Okay. Jeez. I have I had five babies. Okay. I had two by birth and three adopted. Right. And I knew that if I wanted to go anywhere in life, I I, I had to work and I had to push and I had to go to school. Okay, and, and that's what I did. And all of my babies are grown now. And I thank God, if, if you don't do it now, it gets harder as you get older. Okay, and it gets harder as the children get older. So unless you go wait till the next 20 years, you know, it, you, you just have to make a sacrifice. You, you can do it. Miss Bullet did it. And like I say, I got a niece. My niece was um, 14 years old. I used to pay her $5. And, and on a payday, I would take it to McDonald's or, and do stuff like that. And, you know, that's what helped me when I had to pay attention in class. Okay? So, the, like I said, the children are a lot. And, and then even after that, you will still need a break just for you to unwind and digest and to feel good. Okay? I, but, but you can do it. There's no easy I, way. Even if you go to HR, HR will not be easier. No. No, easy, no, if you are truly going to leave with comprehension, it requires hard work. And anything in life worth, worth having requires hard work. I, I ain't trying to downplay it. it that's the truth. It's no easy way. Okay, but well, I'm going to need the group help. I'm telling y'all, I can need y'all help. Y'all, please help me. That's what we're here. We, that's what, that's what we're here for. I can't even that's front. That's the first step. I know the WhatsApp group for. We got you. Yeah. yeah. We, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna, I, I can do the group in class and I just don't want to do it during class. Right. And so you, you, you'll be fine. But if you want to move up and make more money and, and provide for those babies, yeah, they, it will require a, a little bit of sacrifice. That's fine. And, 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 and get some, like I said, get some help. Get a niece or a nephew or somebody. And my life always started at, at 9 p.m. So I would go to school or I would, you know, cook and do everything, feed the children, bathe them. And at eight o'clock, I turned off all my lights. And a lot of nights I fell asleep too. 
and, and didn't wake back up till 12 or sometimes till morning. But on the nights I didn't fall asleep at 9 p.m., I was able to do work that I bought on or, you know, do stuff for me, prepare for, for the next day or, or what have you. So between 9 and 11 was my time to regroup, to feel good, to relax or, or to prepare for the next day. But you can't do it whilst the baby's up. So like I say, 8 o'clock, you turn off all them lights. Eventually, that'll become their bad guy. It's, 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 it's whatever you practice, you become. The Maybe thing is, I put her to bed at eight or nine, and then she gets up at three. Um, gets up dancing and and clapping because she. <laughs> so right. that 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 hasn't been working for me because okay. now okay. she goes to bed early. She gets up at three, and then she doesn't. Yeah, that's so that's the same energy you wear in my background. Yeah, that's how she wakes up at three. And stays that way until it's time for me to get ready for work. And then she falls back to sleep. Okay. Re remember when you were 16, you, you couldn't drive a car, right? But you really wanted to drive. And so you might have been like Miss Bullard and steal the car. Every time you get in it with your cousin, she asks them to let you drive. You start uh -huh. reversing out, volunteering to reverse out the yard, right? That's all. And that then eventually, yeah. Sorry? That happened from I was 13, 14. Oh, okay. <laughs> and now you are an expert driver, right? That's my 30 plus years. Right. So whatever you practice, you become. Okay. And so you, it, it's just about practice. Okay. It's about not giving up and eventually she will get it and you will get it. So put, think about driving. I, okay. I want to learn to drive because I got to hit the clubs. I got to pick up my friends. I got to go to the mall. You have to have that same mindset. I can keep practicing driving till I get it. That's yes, mom. Yeah. So you'll get it. Okay, good. The girls, we got we got help each other and we we can be fine. Okay, oh, and this is why it's important to know. Don't remember me, please. We will. This is why it's important to network and, and have like-minded people around you. And I always tell persons that the same five people that you hang out with on the weekends. For three weekends, you party hard. One weekend, you bring in storm. You rejuvenate yourself. You, you think about what you could do for your country. Think about what you could do for charity. Think about the next business move. I always tell persons, young persons particularly, you need five revenue and revenue streams. Okay? Five revenue streams. Five ways to make money. Okay, and as we go to the course, I, I'll give you a little bit more information. So get your support group together and it may just be somebody to encourage you and, and to show you that, that you can do this with all the things going on in your life that anything you set as a dream, or in fact, you write as a vision. Perhaps, I don't, I don't know if you write your, your, your vision, but you know, the Bible says, um, write the vision and make it clean and clear and a few years oh, ago, I you can see it and run with it. Yes, That's and right. though it tarry, though it tarry, it'll surely come to pass. Yes, right? wow. so amen. So if, if you wrote your vision in January, and all of you, please pull it out and you put this on your vision. And listen to me, each year when November, December come, if I haven't achieved something, I get this burning sensation and I get right to it. It might not happen the first year, but it it will happen. So. Write it down, put it somewhere that you could see, and and all of that, all of that makes a difference for any goal that you may have. I promise you, it it works. Okay, so yeah. okay, good, good, very good. Okay, guys, so like I said about the book, just eight chapters. At the back of the book, you will see a little bit of thickness. And what that represents, you will see some colored paper and it says case one, case two, case three. And this is just different um, pieces that we pulled from the internet. And so that's how we had to put it in the book. And so in your spare time, you look at the various cases and we are gonna discuss one or two of them in class, but they are just readings to give you insight, um, to give you awareness. Um, another thing outside of awareness, um, or just reading, because reading does become monotonous and you could put you straight to sleep. 
Um, there is a movie um, on Netflix called Dirty Money. It's a series. And there's a section or Miss Bullity ain't really savvy. So y'all, if, if y'all don't understand what I mean, just tell me. But you know, y'all can put it in the young people terms for me. There is a series called Dirty Money, and it's the series on HSBC and the Mexican drug lords. I want y'all to take some time and, and watch it. And when y'all watch it, y'all let me know and we'll discuss it in class. And again, it's just awareness training, okay? Because there's a lot of things that we're just simply not aware of. And all of this helps us pr to protect ourselves, okay? So Netflix, Dirty Money, HSBC, and Mexican Drug Lords. And you, you put that in Google or on your Netflix and it should come up, okay? What is it, HSBC? Yeah, HSBC, mm -hmm. Hong Kong, Shanghai, Bang, I think it's <laughs> <laughs> I, I skip my Chinese has come up when I say it. <laughs> HSBC, very large bank all around the world. Um, and the Mexican drug lords. Okay. Awareness. I, I promise you, it's interesting. And there are a lot of um cases on there. There's one with Donald Trump. There's one with um oh Lord, what's in it? Volkswagen, and they defrauded the world. And so all of these things give gives you awareness. Okay. So okay. you can watch that and let me know and, and we'll discuss it hopefully by the second or the third class. Okay, so let's look at chapter one. And I'll just give you an overview of money laundering and, and what it is, okay? And so the book says money laundering is a process where criminals, if they are successful, they conceal the ownership of property from their criminal acts, okay? There are three stages of money laundering. There's placement, where cash is derived from criminal activity and infused into the financial system. There's layering, usually involves a complex system of transactions designed to hide the source of wealth and ownership of the funds. And then there's integration, the stage at which the laundered funds are reintroduced into the legitimate economy, appearing as to have originated from a legitimate source. Okay, and so let me try to put that in, in layman's terms um, for you so you can have a better view. Um, Ms. Bullard started my primarily 16 years was at Royal Bank of Canada. I started on the retail side. Then I ended up as the manager of business support for the trust company. Then I went on to into compliance at another institution. And so at Finkel Robinson Road in Key West Street, um, they recently considered the ghetto branch, right? Just because of our location. And of course, like every other bank or financial institution, right outside our branch, we had a car wash guy called Yadi. Okay, most of y'all have a car wash guy outside of y'all um, institution. Y'all don't know his name. He has some alias, right? So Yadi used to come in and clean all our cars and um, every week we used to be proud of him and he was, you know, make a lot of money. I think I was the telesupervisor at that time. So Yadi came and said, Miss Bullard, you know, um, my make $200 um, um, uh, you know, last week, and I was like, okay, Yadi, what you just do with your money? And he said, well, you know, I got to give my baby mother something. I got to give my mother something. And, you know, I got to love myself. And so I said, okay, Yadi, that's fine. But I, I want to encourage you to say it. So he said, okay, Miss Bullard, what I need to do? I said, man, come in and open up. One of the ladies go open up an account. So we was happy. Um, we opened this account for Yadi. Um, he said he could deposit $50 a week. So... That was going on for about two or three years. And we made sure that, you know, every payday, yeah, he cleaned our car and she uh, could make that extra money and everything was going well until one day, um, yeah, he came in and he went to uh, Lanique. Can he tell Lanique? Lanique, I want to deposit $10,000, right? And so Lanique come to my office and say, now Ms. Bullet, why are yeah, you to this counter with $10,000? Where, where you think you ought to get this from? And so, and he was like, Miss Bullard, you have to deal with this because I, I don't know what to say. So, Lenny, tell, tell, tell me what are, what are your thoughts? We 
open this account. He created a profile. We verify that, hey, this is how much money he makes every, every week. But now he has his $10,000. What happened? Well, where, where does money come from? Adi, um, give me name, Yadi Masi, probably is in the ASOA. Okay, very good. Because, of course, we don't want to automatically assume, assume. The most. We want to assume the best is our client who we verify, who we have a long standing relationship with. So we want to assume the best. Okay, so right. probably in an ASU. Okay, and so what, what what should we do? And anybody could chime in and, 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 and help with me. What, what, what should we do? Nene, you a teller now, right? No, ma'am. I'm, I'm an open it? officer. Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. Any tellers? No, no tell us. Okay, so help us. Help, help. Me, I'm a teller. Okay, go ahead, Jamie. What, 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 what should we do? What should be our next steps? So we would have them follow a uh, DSF. Okay, but well, tell us what DSF is now. Declaration it's, source of funds. Yes. Okay. So it's a form that you would have to follow just to say exactly where the funds came from and you would need supporting documents. Okay, so very so good. You can't tell me, oh, this is my ASU draw. Because anybody could say, you know, they've been in an ASU. So oh, in that case, they would have to provide their contract where they was in the ASU to prove that, hey, this 10 right. came from there. And yes, and even when they provide their contract, what we do is we call the ASU holder for confirmation. Okay. So, and so we would have, we would need all of that on record. Okay. So very good lady. So there's no, remember now we would have, he would have opened an account. He would have filled out our forms on our forms. There are thresholds. It asks you how much money per week can you deposit or per month? How often are you going to deposit per month? And so then we ask them, where's the source of funds coming from? So of course, Yari's profile will say, it comes from cleaning cars. I can deposit $50 a, a week. And I, the frequency is per week, right? And it's $50. So we should expect 200, perhaps 300. Just of course, we're not going to, you know, things change. Somebody might accept them or whatever. So within reason, $300 would have been reasonable. But $10,000, definitely um, outside his profile, okay? And so we would consider that an unusual transaction. So, of course, I had to bring Yadi into my office. And I say, Yadi, where you get this $10,000 from? Okay, and so he said, Miss Butler, the man I thought you would have been proud of me. I thought you would have been happy. Man, I hit a little lick, and and, and you know, so it come true. And so I bring this money straight to you, Miss Butler. And I say, Yadi, really, really? And he said, Yeah, man. I said, Okay, then, Yadi. So of course, we took the money, we deposited to the account, we put it on hold, and then we filled out a suspicious transaction report. And we had our compliance officer then investigate whether this money was legitimate or, you know, and, and she filled out an STR. And unfortunately, you know, she sent it to the um, FIU and Yadi was arrested. And of course, his entire car wash was shut down. And I think he would have spent some time. Okay, but again, this is what happens when you work in a financial institution. You have a duty to report, okay? And if you do not report, there's a fine attached to that. It's called failing to disclose. You also cannot tip off. Even though Yadi was my boy, I, I was worried. Now who will clean my car? You know, and we don't wanna see a young person, you know, lose their business or, or, or shut down. Who now is going to, um, you cannot tip off. So I couldn't say, Yadi, you know, you would get in trouble for this. Okay? So we cannot tip off and we cannot fail to disclose. Okay? So when Yadi would have made the deposit, he would have placed that into the financial services sector. Right? And in the offshore world is where you see a lot of layering. So that was the proceeds of a criminal act. 
he did a drug deal. He placed it in the financial services sector. So now it mixed in with legitimate money and it was the proceeds of a crime. In the offshore world, you will see that they transfer from A account to B account, to they buy a car, they um, send some money to Switzerland, they pay somebody's salary. So there's a layer um, created trying to diminish the audit trail, trying to say, um, you know, or to link it back to who the real owner was. Because out of that $10,000, apparently Yari was only really supposed to get five hundred. dollars But they do the drug deal, they made the 10000 and really he wanted Yari to deposit it to his account then to transfer on to, you know, this drug dealer and Yari would then keep $500. Okay, and so that would be considered layering when you do the multiple transfers, transfers to diminish the audit trail. And then integration, the money is already in the financial system. It's already been placed. You want to buy a car. So this money now goes to Auto Mall. Auto Mall then receives it as a legitimate um, deposit and now they go and pay their staff with it or you pay your children's school fees for them, okay? And so that's how the illegal money or the criminal funds are then integrated back into the community, okay? And so that's placement, layering, and integration, okay? And so question one for homework asks you to describe money laundering in the placement stage. Okay, and so you would say what placement is, and then you would use a real life scenario. A lot of persons create scenario, but there are, are real life cases. You go on, on the internet and you do research. Okay, and you add that to your essay, and that's how you get full points. Okay, so that's the stages of money laundering, and they compare it to like a washing machine, the money is washed, and that it's clean before it's infused back in the, the financial services sector. Okay, uh, are we clear with money laundering? Do we have any questions? Do we understand the three stages? I have a question, please, Ms. Bullard. Yes, go ahead. So what happens to the funds, like how you were giving us the Yachty story, right? What happens to the funds after he makes the deposit? Because you know that it's illegal funds. Right, and so what we do is we, we put it on hold. And of course, the next day now, he, he comes back and he says, I want to transfer this money. And so we can't tip him off. And so what we do is we, on the back of each of our um, signature cards, and this is at Royal Bank, and it's in the terms and agreements at any other institution, it tells you that the bank has a right to hold um, those funds for three days. In the offshore world, our contract says for 30 days, okay? So you would need to know the terms and condition of your institution so you can give the customer a reasonable excuse. Today, what we are saying is all compliance have it on hold, or compliance checking it, that's tipping off, okay? So we have to move away from that terminology to even suggest that something is wrong, okay? So we whatever your uh, policy is within your um, institution, this is what you should say. It should never be compliance checking it or they, you know, you should never tip off that, that, that company. I mean, right. that company or that person, right? Because again, there's a fine and you can go to jail for, for tipping off as well. So what I do in the offshore world, once I would have filed an SDR, I call the FIU and I let them know that the customer is in the bank and they want to make a uh, withdrawal, what should I do? And they normally say, well, how much is it? I say, well, he deposited 10,000, he wants 500. They say, okay, give him the 500. But they don't want the majority of the funds to go out whilst they're investigating. If, if he did say, give me 9,000, they would say, no, you have to tell him um, um, the bank system down or, or something like that, right? Okay. So you speak to your money laundering reporting officer, they decide, and that's what their job is, to investigate, to liaise with the FIU, to come up with these solutions. But it should never be, and all of us do it, 
or compliance have it on hold? Or I don't know, I have to ask compliance. No, you have to find correct terminology or uh, what the policy is within your institution to defray the customer. Or you just simply, because I used to say, let them read the back of the signature card where it says the bank had the right to hold it for three days. And, and that's what you tell them. And if they start to carry on and you call the manager and the manager has to, you know, calm them down. Okay, so find out what the policy is in your institution, but you cannot tip off. I, okay. Can I mm -hmm. add to that too, Ms. Fuller? Yes, go ahead. So even as a teller, let's say someone's limit is 5000 per month. Like this is what they agree that they won't go over for that month, right? Mm -hmm. If they come and they, they, let's say they make a deposit on the first of this month, 1500 then they come back two days later, another 1500 then another 1500 and that so when when it comes when when they um bring that final deposit that would take them over the five thousand like miss bullet was saying you can't tip off so in a scenario like that you still have to you you because you check in their history while they're giving you that that money and once they place some money in your hand, you cannot give them that back and say, well, oh, this could take you over your limit. Do not deposit that all. You understand? Or, sir, ma'am, you would need supporting documents if I take this money from you. We're not allowed to say that. You have to take that money and then you give them the form and, and like that. Right. So if you, if you tell them, or you know this could take you over your limit. That's that's tipping off as well. Correct. Curtsy, Jamie, we need you in this class. We need you. Okay, <laughs> so so very good. Um, and would you describe Jamie with the three deposits of fifteen hundred? Is called smurfing, and smurfing started when there were thresholds in place because the law used to say if they deposit over five thousand, question them. So they bought 4,099 and then they yeah. increased 10,000. So they bought 9,099. Then they increased it to 15,000. They bought 14,099, okay? So they mm. would not be questioned. And that's why they moved away from that rules-based approach to a risk-based approach. Hey, we're gonna generate a profile for you. We're gonna corroborate the information that you bring in. Bring your job letter. Let us see where you're getting this $2,000 a month from the deposit. You see what I mean? And yes, once we corroborate that information in that match, when you go over, then like Jamie says, you take that money and then you said, okay, we are thinking the best fell out this declare the source of funds for us. And if they can't, or you you know, when people just put foolishness on it and it didn't make sense, but you put, you know, follow your internal policy, mm -hmm. uh, submit it to your manager or to your, directly to your, MLRO or your compliance department for investigation. Also, okay. ladies, I had a client who came to me to make a deposit that would have taken the client over their limit for the month. And so when I asked them, you know, where were the funds coming from and all that, they told me that they had a tuck shop. Okay, fine. So you have a tuck shop, but you don't have a business license. And then you, so you already can prove that you actually run in a tuck shop. And so, of course, I had to turn them over to management because that's another way persons try to come and deposit illegal or dirty money. They will tell you they have a business, but they don't even possess a business license. Okay, so yes, very good. And so that's called proper due diligence. And again, this is a very popular question on the exam. What are we required to do? Our duty is to know our customers, then to carry out due diligence. So on the multiple choice, it would ask you what our duty is as working in the financial services sector. And the choices are KYC or due diligence. 
and, and persons always pick due diligence, but due diligence happens after we collect all the information on the customer. As account officers, we are required to know our customers. Okay, so just, just remember that because that question always comes up because person always gets it wrong. You know your customer and then you carry out the proper due diligence um, on that customer. Okay, now under money laundering, and of course, um, in the Bahamas, money laundering was not a predicate crime on our books. So for many years, persons just got charged with fraud or stealing by reason of employment or drug dealing or theft. However, after 218 and the laws were updated, it's now theft and money laundering, fraud and money laundering, corruption and bribery and money laundering. And that money laundering charge carries a, you know, a much more heftier fine. Okay. So what I'm wondering is, you know, a lot of persons in the in the financial services sector, they they go home for stealing by reason of employment. And the banks don't like to suffer reputational risks. And a lot of times they don't show up to court. However, I am wondering now if they are going to be able to drop those charges now that that money laundering charge is attached to it because we are being internationally watched. And because we did not have money laundering as a predicate crime on our books, there are not many people that were charged with it. So when the FATF came in, um, you know, our attorney general quickly said, oh, we have 83 people charged with, with money laundering, okay? So this is why I'm telling you, be careful. Because of course we see five politicians being brought before the courts for corruption and bribery. They were all let go, okay? Somebody has to go to jail, okay? We have to get our numbers up for the international community and regulations regulators to feel that we are doing what we are supposed to do. So who are they going to take advantage of? The young, the inexperienced, and the broke people who can't afford the lawyers, okay? Only broke people is go to jail, only broke people is pay bills, okay? So make sure that you don't fall in that um, category. A lot of institutions do not have proper systems in place to help aid in the tracking of money laundering and terrorist financing. You need to go to work to make sure that you understand what system your um, institution has and how it works. So nobody can take advantage of you, okay? You don't need to be in a position that you are not qualified for if you don't plan to educate yourself. That's the first thing they're gonna say is, this person didn't have sufficient experience or educational background to have this position, and, and that's why this fraud happened, okay? There are millions of hackers and scammers out there. We can only mitigate risk, we cannot eliminate risk, okay? We can mitigate by putting controls in place, by being educated, by having awareness, but the hackers and scammers are still smarter than us, okay? The only way to save yourself is to, when they pull out, if there's a fraud, or an infiltration with all this technology now, when they pull out your resume, you qualified and you have sufficient experience. If God help, if you don't qualify or have sufficient experience, it could be you that go to jail. Because like I say, we are not as smart as these hackers and scammers. The only way you save yourself is you are qualified and you could quote what the policy says. And if there's a gap in the policy, you can say there's a gap in the policy and I send I know what the regulators policy say, and I sent an email and, and they never made the, the change, okay? This is why I want you to watch Dirty Money. They I have a question. Mm -hmm. Sorry, um, a few years back, I had a situation whereby um, we had some fraudulent activities going on with credit card users. But because we're not in the financial system, and this is when I was at AML, because we're not in the financial system, how does that work now that I was able to identify these activities based on uh, lack, lack of supporting documents or 
um, the volume of the same type of items that were purchased. How does that work like in that type of industry or in a Wendy's type of industry? Okay, let me, let me just give you an example of, and I, I hope this answers your question. Um, there was a fraudster that infiltrated Atlantis front desk, okay? Atlantis Bank is Scotia Bank. And so that means Scotia Bank suffered a loss of, I think almost $200,000 because the hackers, they hacked into their credit card machine on Atlantis front desk. Okay, so of course somebody is Scotia Bank went home. Whomever was in charge of that account and was supposed to be checking and monitoring to ensure that stuff like that did not happen would go home. Okay, or would be removed. Okay. okay? And then um, the tech department would they would put more controls in place, meaning okay. that um, well the credit card machine, you know, like you say, they either wasn't getting IDs or um, they was, you know, swiping, they, they did something negligent. And that's what I'm saying. You have to know what your policy says to ensure that you're not being negligent because the only way for you to get out of that is once you would have checked everybody's ID and make sure the name match. Right. 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 But like but I said, hackers and scammers, they come up with the the door. Oh, sorry, Jamie, Jamie, mute your mic first, please, Jamie. That's what I say. Jamie. Yeah, sorry, Latoya, it, 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 does that explain it? Yes, yes. Yeah. I just wondered, I just wondered, you know, based on that side of it. Right, right. And so each, each company has to, you, you know what I mean, make an alert. Like Atlantis had to make an alert to the bank that something was happening, but they didn't know. Or the officer had to say, I, I see all these charges coming in and we had at least 10 persons to call and, and, and say that fraud happened over their account. Luckily for Visa and MasterCard, um, they normally give you an insurance. If fraud happens and nobody was negligent, then you get your money back. But that fraud happened and it was the account officer that was negligent. And so Scotia Bank paid those fines and paid those people back. Okay, so okay. of course they let that person go. Okay. So you wanna make sure that your staff understands they have to check the name, they have to record the ID. Because people, like I say, the hackers and scammers are smart. Very they know how to beat the system. If you don't know the policy, they, they say, Latoya, why did you pick this up? Right. But right. They, they, those ones were really smart because they had they had matching identifications as well. Okay. So it, they were see, doing everything nothing, online. Right. So there's nothing, they smarter than us. Yeah. The way for you to protect yourself is to know your, what your policy says and make sure you follow um, um, your procedure. But see, what happens to us is we never know what our policies say. Okay. We never know what the procedures say. And the end of the school for the last 10 years. Right. Yeah. So when something happens, the first thing they do is pull out your resume to see if you qualify to be in the, that position. Okay. And then they interview you to make sure you know what you're doing. Right. You, you, you see what I mean? Because they yeah. always think that it's internal. So that's why I'm saying educate yourself and protect yourself to make sure that if you are infiltrated, that you don't get the blame. Agreed. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay good. Right. So 21 crimes under money laundering, fraud, theft, counterfeiting, drug dealing, tax evasion, smuggling, all those fall under money laundering. So if you do any of those, you get that theft charge and the money laundering charge. Okay. And there's an offense under a couple of those laws on the proceeds of crime. Under the FTRA, all of the money laundering laws, most of them um, fall under. And that's another very popular essay on the final exam. It normally asks you to describe five of these crimes and, 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 um, or five ways to illegally obtain money. And so you would go through drug dealing and corruption and um, counterfeiting and you would give um, what uh, counterfeiting is a definition. And then a very popular um, 
example that people use with the counterfeiting, they say George Floyd, and they just give an overview of the cup um, of the the case where he went into a store. It was presumed he had an a counterfeit twenty dollars. The store ma manager called the police, and unfortunately, he lost his life. Okay, and so uh, you 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 write those five crimes. You give an overview of two or three of them, and you get four points. Okay, so very very easy to um, you know get four points on on that question. Okay, any any questions? We we understand the cycle. We understand the washing of the money, integration. We understand the crimes. Is, is that clear? Any questions? I'm good. Good. No. Okay. No okay. That's that's chapter one. That's money laundering. That's the easy part. <laughs> that's the easy part. That's chapter one. Okay. Oh, Miss Bullard, question. Yes. How do I access this Zoom call after we're done to re to watch a recording? Okay, so in the invite, Miguel would have put in instructions how to go on. I think it's biff.edu and then to select the date and, and time of the class, and you should be able to um, access it. He normally takes it takes him two days to download it and get it up on the site, but normally in the link. Instructions are there on how to access the class. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, or if any issues, just call me again. It's cell number and everything is in the in the welcome message. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna move on to um, terrorism, understanding terrorist financing and of course, um, we would be familiar with 9-11 and everybody attributes that to, you know, the, the biggest terrorism after, you know, the world experience. Um, the book says the objective of terrorism is to intimidate a population or compel a government or an international organization to do or abstain from any act. Um, there are terrorists, um, foreign terrorist organizations, Al-Qaeda, Boko Raham, and a two-splinter group of the Irish Republic Army. Um, the, their objectives include they need recruitment, they need to train people, they need weapons, they need travel, they need a safe haven. Bin Laden lived safety for 10 years. Um, they create their money through both legitimate and illegitimate sources, whereas money launderers only, um, you know, seek profit and they get their money through illegitimate sources. Then money laundering is for profit, their motivation is for profit, terrorist financing, their motivation is ideolo ideological, meaning it's their belief. They grow up like how we are a Christian nation, and we grew up believing in Christ and Christianity. They grew up believing in Allah and believing that, you know, if they become a suicide bomber or do these things in, in their Muslim community or in, in the name of Allah, they will die. Their parents will be rich. They will have virgins and streets of gold. And I don't know if it's heaven or wherever they go. So it's a belief. So that's why so many, it's hard for so many of them to, um, you know, walk away from it. Um, so they, the criminal activity, they, they get self-financing to sympathize as people, just like how we send money to Billy Graham and T.D. Jakes. They are people who believe, you know, send money for Allah and uh, for the Muslim community and, and their belief, or they drug traffic, they smuggle weapons, they rob. Um, they tax people, and, and we're going to read um, something at the back of the book um, to talk about how they tax people. So I just want you to pay attention to their, to their objectives, recruitment, training, and weapons, and illegitimate ways versus legitimate ways that they finance themselves. So, of course, ISIS and all of those are familiar. However, in 
America in 2019, and I always remember this, they had more than 365 domestic terrorism acts. And of course, you know, if America sneezes, we catch a cold, and we have seen one or two of those domestic acts, terrorism acts happen here. So a lot of times we focus on, you know, 9-11 and ISIS, but the stemming problem or the brewing problem in America, and it's trickling over to us, is this domestic terrorism. So I want you to be very aware. Don't only think of, you know, the international terrorists. Um, it's only 365 days in a year, and every day we hear either a school getting shot up or a grocery store. Just yesterday, it was July 4th, and, and somebody killed six persons yesterday. In the Bahamas, we saw at a Fox Hill Park, eight persons got shot. Um, at a baby shower in Montel Heights, 13 persons got shot. And then most recently, six persons got shot. Um, on Jerome Avenue. So our terrorism problem is gang related and we have to ensure that we get, uh, I guess every every night we see, we had eight murders last week. We see, uh, uh, you know, a young guy getting killed every night. And before it gets, I mean, it's already out of control. Um, you know, we have a new commissioner of police coming in today. And I really hope that, you know, they could put a, just, you know, something, they could get this under control before it complete. I mean, it's already out of control, but they can get some control on it, okay? Um, in 2001, you know, compliance was just one year old. All these rules and regulations and these laws had just come out. And there was September 11, and of course, we should all know, I don't know if there's anybody who don't know about September 11, but, um, you know, the planes went into the World Trade Center and lots of people died. Um, we in the Bahamas, we have four international airports. I think it's Exuma, Eleuthera, Freeport, and Exuma, Eleuthera, and San Salvador. And so in Freeport, you know, two terrorists had landed in Freeport. And luckily for us, um, they did not have the proper visas. And our immigration back in 2000 was knowledgeable enough to stop them and you know, not take a tip that day and let them through and return them back to the same country that they had come from. But their plan was to um, hijack some planes out of Freeport and I think fly them into the White House. So luckily, um, you know, in the Bahamas, we were protected from that and our uh, immigration officers were vigilant or today we would have still been suffering reputational risk if, if they were able to achieve that. Um, go ahead, Lani. I noticed, um, I mean, I know the terrorists, but I noticed even with um, like how the war is going on, what's going on in Ukraine, like, they had access to um we had to ha we had to like i guess monitor or report on our ukrainian customers or customers who were from ukraine even and i was like i mean i thought that was a bit excessive but i guess now i didn't realize that i guess all of this tie into compliance and i guess the money laundering i mean the whole scenario of it i didn't realize that it was that serious, you know what I mean? Because it's right, like, right, right. And again, that's why I say this is awareness training. There'll be a lot right. of surprises. There'll be a lot of surprises. Yeah, right, so, right. So those in Russia, we have four four million dollars worth of Russian assets in the Bahamas, and so wow. they were sanctioned. And when, if when you get to intermediate, you will learn more about sanctions and, and the importance of them. Okay. Okay. So why they was asking about those customers. Okay, because I found that I say why say why are saying these two guys in the I mean you know doing something you'll be, crazy you'll be very surprised. Where from Ukraine? Buy your money all the way in the Bahamas. Think about it. That's true, but I mean it only came up because they've been our customers for a while. But it's just it only we had to like like search them up because 
they had they were from Ukraine and I was like wow right. that's crazy yeah and it, it, the thing about it Ukraine was a blocked country for many many years mm -hmm. because they Putin had um appointed you know it used to be the USSR the United Russian Soviet Union and okay. they broke off gave Ukraine independence but he put like his boy in charge of Ukraine and his boy was, you know, um, sending him all the money, you know, from Ukraine because Ukraine have the largest corn source in the world. And so wow. the people realized that all the money was coming out of Ukraine into, you know, all the natural resources was going into Putin, into Russia. And so they voted him out. And so then they got an, you know, upstanding um, prime minister or president, whatever they have. And now he stopped all of this, all the funds going from Ukraine to Russia, because he was, that was, that was like, the Queen gave us independence from 1973, but all our money is still going to the, to the Queen rather than to our country. And so when he stopped that, Putin got out of control, and hence now he wants to take ownership of the country now that it has oil and gas and, you know, natural resources and corn and the largest producer of corn in the world. And so now it's, it's just about the money and he he gave them independence. He can't just take them back because now they're doing good. You right. Know? So, yeah. 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 And so that's why you see countries around the world, you see Barbados, um, um, they do they they became a republic because they don't mm -hmm. want the queen to come and talk, but all Barbados making all this money. And we even had talks of becoming a republic now. So there's no repercussion, no, nobody think that. We make a billion dollars, it, it belongs to them, or they should get something. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Okay, good. So, um, again, on page 23, it talks about what I said earlier about the motivation versus terrorist, um, the motivation for money laundering. And again, this is a very popular question on the exam to compare and contrast terrorist financing and money laundering. You see, the motivation for money laundering is profit seeking for terrorist financing is ideological. Um, there's attention, source of funding, methods, life cycle, and what have you, okay? So you could take some time to study that and, and read through that, um, but domestic terrorism, please be quite aware and we need persons in our government, in our police force, um, you know, to stop all this opposing and, really deal with the issues in the country because every day you know they just bickering back and forth about foolishness when we have an uh, they say they call it an, an epidemic where you know a young guy um dies every day and sometimes two or three three persons are getting killed so we really need persons um in charge who who will not only just talk but you know make some changes and and, and help the country Okay, um, to continue on with terrorist financing, I, I want a volunteer to read. Um, can I have a volunteer to read who, who want their 5% right up front? Nobody, you all sleep? I don't Which mind reading the end of the book. Oh. Which page are you reading from? We are going to look at case at one of the cases at the back of the book. Um, okay. Case five, Opal. That's Opal. Yeah. Or who said they want to read? It was an Opal or Precious? Oh, I raised my hand, but it, it doesn't matter. You can go ahead, Opal. You can go ahead. Okay. You say case five? Yeah, case five at the back of the book. Okay. Okay, and so I really, we, we're just going to read um, the first two pages, and then in your spare time, you can um, um, finish and, and read it. But again, all of this is awareness training when it comes to terrorism and the extremes that they do too. So I really want you to pay attention to, to, to what this says, and then we'll discuss if, if any of you knew or even imagine any of this. Okay, so, so go ahead, open just the first two pages. And okay. don't worry about the names. They they funny names um, from the Middle East. So don't worry about pronouncing the names. Okay. 
Um, how do ISIS terrorists finance their attacks? Meeting in Turkey just two days after the horrific terrorist attacks in Paris, leaders of the G20 countries issued a statement condemning recent Islamic State in Iraq and Syria, which is ISIS. Attacks and reaffirmed their commitment to combat terrorism. More specifically, the group of industrial nations recommitted itself to tackling the financing channels of terrorism, which begs the question, how does ISIS finance its international operations? ISIS is primarily financed through a wide array of criminal activities, large and small, centered in the parts of Syria and Iraq that are under the group's control. ISIS steals livestock, sells foreign fighter passports, taxes minorities and farmers and truckers, runs a sophisticated extortion racket, kidnaps civilians for ransom payments, loots antiquities, and much more. It also makes about 40 million a month from illicit oil sales alone. Uh, what? Yes, 40 million. Okay. But these forces primarily support the group's expensive state building and war fighting enterprises back home, ranging from paying teachers salaries and collecting the garbage to bribing tribal leaders and paying fighters salaries. So it is pay pe sorry. There is, however, an entrepreneurial self-financing model that ISIS recruits and supporters around the world have been encouraged to use to fund either their travel to ISIS, controlled land, or perhaps their attacks in the West. While it is too soon to state with any certainty how the Paris attacks were funded, the likelihood is that they were funded in whole or in part through local criminal activities or otherwise legal activities such as the use of state welfare benefits or taking out a loan. Okay, Opal, one second. So um, Latoya, are you gonna go to the bank and get a loan to send it to ISIS? Oh, no. <laughs> okay, but this is what they're saying. Deandra, unfortunately you were in Hurricane Dorian in, in Abaco and Freeport. You came to the capital and they gave you social service um, payments. Instead of going to the food store and getting groceries and clothes or whatever, you sent that to ISIS. Never. Mm -hmm. Okay, but this is what they are saying. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and remember now, they are like our Billy Graham or our T.D. Jakes. And some of us, is, I don't know if we go as far as send, you know, getting a loan. Mm -hmm. But again, you walk into the bank and you say, I want a $10,000 loan. The bank asks you for receipts, right? Or invoices to pay. And yeah. you get mad. Why have mm -hmm. to bring an invoice? So we go and we make up a fake invoice, right? Mm -hmm. And then we send it to ISIS. And so these are some of the controls that are in place to ensure that, hey, this money legitimately going to pay school fees or legitimately yeah. going to, um, you know, purchase furniture. Because yeah. this is... The persons have done. Okay, go ahead. None of these would surprise since authorities have been tracking the use of such funding schemes by prospective foreign terrorist fighters looking to join ISIS. Indeed, earlier this year, Financial Ash Action Task Force report identified several potential revenue streams for would-be foreign terrorist fighters including robbery and drug trafficking, various social service payments and unpaid loans. Some potential plotters or travelers took on short-term jobs to raise the money that the needed, while others simply drew on their savings or student loan accounts. Consider a few examples. What is one of them names he was talking yeah, about? Yeah, that's one of them names, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Michael who was murdered a Canadian soldier before attacking Canadian parliament buildings in October 2014, worked at one of the Alberta oil fields to raise money for his attempted travel to Syria. Petty crime has the potential to bring in sufficient funds for a homegrown attack or transportation to a combat zone as well. There's the case of the 15-year-old boy in Montreal who held up a convenience store with a knife 
stealing some 2200 to pay for his plane ticket out of Canada. The teen's father turned him into the police after finding the money in his son's bag. Or take the four men arrested in February in Brooklyn, New York, for attempting to join ISIS. Some of their funds were supplied by a supporter who operated mall kiosks, selling kitchenware and cell phones. According to the incident in indictment, a round trip ticket to Istanbul cost a mere $598. One of the defendants expected that he would not need to bring more than 400 to travel to Syria because he would not have any concerns in the land of the Islamic State. In Britain, the Metropolitan Police's Police Counterism Counterterrorism. Command, oh Jesus, sorry. Counterterrorism Command Unit has note, noted several cases where Jadis financed themselves through state-funded welfare payments. Most recently, Yaha Rashid used his student loans and educational grants to cover the travel costs for himself and four friends to go join ISIS in Syria via Morocco and Turkey. Closer to home, Christopher Cornell, who stands accused of plotting to detonate pipe bombs at the U.S. Capitol and shoot people as they ran away, simply saved money to conduct his attack, according to the FBI. Okay, and several we can stop right there. We can stop right there. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Opal, but again, to give you awareness training, because we would never dream that persons would take out loans. We would never dream that they would go down to social service and say they need, you know, funding for food and, and clothes and for rent, and then take it and turn over to ISIS or commit robbery. But, but let's think about Bin Laden. Bin Laden lived for 10 years after September 11. And he did not live in a one room shack. He had a two story house with a few wives, a few concubines and all his children, air conditioned. I'm sure he ate steak and lobsters and drank the best wine. He needed insulin each day to survive and he surely survived, okay? And I always compare that to myself. I say, if I lose my job and I call my mother and say, I need to come home and live with me and my husband and my five kids, and I'm not gonna be working. The first thing she'll ask me is how long I could be there. I definitely eat no steak and lobster and bring no outside children or no concubine. And every day she could give me the newspaper and ask me and my husband when we leave in and if we read the newspaper, if we see any job, correct? We wouldn't be living there comfortably. And the average person who needs medication can't afford that, okay? He could get insulin every day and still pay all the bills he had and live comfortably. And what do we attribute that to? His network, 10 years or for building a strong network, okay? So we want nothing else from Bin Laden, but to have a network as strong as it is. And we ain't gonna be in trouble, we can do the right thing, we can be ethical and honorable, commit no crimes with our strong network, correct? Correct. Correct. Okay, good. So make sure you educate it, you know your policy and your procedure. You know your job description. You are there to brainstorm and help the company. If there are any gaps, you put it in an email and say, I, I, I noticed that the regulator says this and we say that it's a conflict. And, and don't get mad if they don't change it, but protect yourself. I was going to tell you earlier that um, Volkswagen, they was able to defraud the world because they bought in a new system and nobody knew how to use it. Okay, and nobody knew how to use it because they made it that way so they could defraud the system. Okay, so make sure no, you're not using a system that you don't understand, that you don't know how it works, that you ensure that you know your job and what your policy and procedure says, and so you don't go to jail. 
Okay. Uh, any questions or concerns? No, ma'am. Okay. So I hope um, this was informative. I hope we are leaving here tonight. We are learning something. There's normally a 30 minute break, and I didn't ask persons to vote. We, we can vote next week. Um, persons normally say, Bill, we just want to end at 8 30. Um, it's 8 29, but I haven't heard from some of you today, and I want to make sure everybody is on their way to getting their 5%. So I see Shamara Burroughs. I don't know if you signed in twice, but are you there, Sh Shamara? No? I'm here. I'm here. Okay. I have my laptop signed in and I'm on my phone. Okay. Okay, so give me give me some feedback on what you heard tonight. Is there anything that stood out to you? Um, well, I work in a um a company where we do loans for customers, well, government workers only. But sometimes we have customers, they would walk into the company and they'd be like, okay, they would borrow five thousand dollars and then two weeks later they come in and they they're like, Okay, I want to pay it off. And they would bring five thousand dollars to pay it off. And it was something that we learned that we, we need to find out where the funds came from. And they, they have all kinds of reasons like, oh, we were going to the States and we didn't go anymore. So we still have the funds. And it's something we were taught to look out for because it could be someone washing money. And, but in yeah. our line, that's what we really look at because you have customers sometimes walking with $3,000 and they just want to pay off their bill or they want to put it on as a principal payment. And then they come back two weeks later and they want to do another principal payment. And then it's like, how often do we accept it? Do we have a level where, like, like you say, you can come in one day and reach the, to the threshold, but then you come in two weeks later and bring the same amount of money. So it's something we were taught that we have to watch. And then some people who just, or some persons would be to send them to the bank because then the bank would ask for source of funds. So if it's over a certain amount, they ask, and then we don't have to worry about that because once the bank deals with it, we're like almost sure it's okay. So it's 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 a lot to think about. Yeah. Like you wouldn't yeah. think about these things as terrorism or as money laundering. You just think of it like, okay, maybe they hit a lick. They want right. to pay off. Right. <laughs> right. But then you see it happening often and, and always, like I say, do your proper due diligence. Ask for the source of funds attach that to the entry and make sure you cover yourself because these things sometimes come back to haunt you. Okay? What if the customer comes in and say, we want a number? Do we need to like... But no, it's legal some... now. Yeah, it's legal now. And so I, to... you could say, give me a screenshot of your, your account or go to Island Luck and tell them, give you some printout or something if you are going to yeah. deposit that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, but the desk ask don't be afraid you know be nice you it's very competitive you want to uh, strike a balance between you know compliance and the you know customer service you be nice and you be courteous and and you ask um questions and and that's why it's you know we're focused now on relationship building because you are required to know your customer and and you could tell the customer i'm i'm you use my friend now you know i'm required to build a relationship with you so you know, let's let, let's get to know each other. So when I have to ask you these questions, you don't you don't feel like I'm being intrusive. You know, so really, an account opening positions, you have to work on relationship building okay. and knowing your customer. And last question of the night: What if we are in a part of the Rotary and the Toastmasters? Like, how do we find people who are so we can get that five percent? Is is online? Yes, and, and you don't have to go in person. A lot of um, they're still having on. Um, online sessions so go right on facebook and put in rotary or, or toastmasters and it, it comes up and just look at the various topics and see if you're interested in any and and just invite yourself okay yeah or, or ask for send them an email or uh, a text and, and and they they just say I'd, I'd like to attend for my class okay yeah okay okay so very good shamara um Precious, I, I don't think I heard from you. I have to make sure I know everybody by the end of the class. So Precious, give me some feedback, please. Um, actually, I did some reading last night on chapter one and two. It was very interesting. Um, 
I will definitely look more into the various um, cases tonight to gain more knowledge. But um, last night I actually did some reading and prior to even um, getting the book, I was actually listening to some stuff online. So I was already familiar with the process, the placement, the layering, um, okay. Excellent. integration and all of that. So okay. I kind of... Mm -hmm. Go mm -hmm. ahead. No, you can go ahead. No, uh, in your research, and I, I, I forgot to mention this because, you know, Ms. Bullitt is just saying a lot of stuff. Um, that car wash case, the Securities Commission, who is the regulator, actually had a car wash attendant who defrauded them of $800,000. And what he did was uh, somebody left, like, their computer bag, and... Um, they had, I think, pre-signed checks and he was able to get a hand on those pre-signed checks and he just went about cashing them to the sum of $800,000, okay? And so you have to make sure that when these persons, and we all have that car wash guy or that peanut guy or that person who's bring us lunch and we all only know them as, as a Yari or, or an alias or something like that, okay? If the Securities Commission and, and again, we are a very reactive society. We, we only react after things happen. We need to be a little bit more proactive. We have to vet everybody. Everybody who comes into the premises, you can't be saying you name Yari. We need to know your first name because that person's first name was Jeremy Pinder and he was out on bail for robbing Commonwealth Bank in Lutra. Okay? And so had they checked his name, you have to check all your vendors, every, everybody crafty now. Had they checked his name and saw that he was out on bail for robbing a bank, there was no way he could set up a car wash at the regulator in the Bahamas, correct? Correct. Oh, correct. I also, mm -hmm. um, the various, um, and on page 10, um, in the Bahamas, the proceeds of crying out, do we have to familiarize ourselves with these um, different uh, offense and these acts? Um, you should, again, have awareness and know where to find them. And so let me just share the screen again and, and, and show you. These, these acts are about 100 and something pages each. You, when we get to chapter three, we will talk about, or chapter four, I think, we'll talk about these seven that make up the money laundering and terrorist financing legislation, the, the framework, okay? So you should be familiar that these are the legislation that govern, you know, anti-money laundering and compliance, okay? But you don't have to read them in depth. You just need to know how to look and where to find them, okay? to cut down the amount of research that you have to do. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay, great. Great. Okay, who, who else you can talk to Ms. Bullitt today? Let me see, let me see, let me see. Uh, Deandra? Hi. Hi, Deandra, give, give Ms. Bullitt some feedback and thank you so much, Precious. Um, tell me what stood out to you today. Um, what really stood out to me, I'd say, is how everything ties together um, based on what I learned today, what we went over today, and I guess what we do on a daily basis to work. You see how it ties into doing your Google search on your customers, knowing your customers, their activity, um, you know, their account balance, just through knowing your customer yes. and how important it is to know your policy because, like you say, you could go to jail. And right. you know, nobody right. won't go to jail. Right. And, and like I say, you people have been um, be losing their jobs. And yeah. now, like I say, we're being internationally watched. Some people have to go to jail. Yeah. Before they say our laws are ineffective, right? Yeah. But a lot of people have lost their jobs because they simply could not explain what the policy says and how the system was infiltrated. Mm -hmm. If you was the gatekeeper, how the system was infiltrated. Mm -hmm. You know, and you have to explain there's either a gap in the policy or the policy says A, B, or C. And now we've learned from this incident, now we need another control in place. Yeah. Or until they fix the system, you know, we're doing it manually so it's easy to infiltrate the system. And right. we had we had people sit in front of us and say, I don't know. You say I don't know to Miss Bullet, you gotta go. 
that's, yeah. that's that one gotta go yeah. because I don't know a lot of stuff and you know sometimes I, I have a delayed response I can't remember mm -hmm. but I, I don't know is an un, un, unacceptable response you should say give me a minute I'll do some research I'll get back to you or something like that but clearly for something that is your responsibility I don't know mm -hmm. you gotta go home yeah yeah okay so let us not be caught in those positions yes no. okay also um miss bullet um like i said i was actually, um i was actually listening to some stuff on youtube prior to receiving my book and the class and something that stood out to me um with the way they would place the placement the layering and the integration they described it as a web and what i gathered was the web is basically not to trace back to how this fund was um, received. So that right. could be- To the drug dealing, yeah. Criminal to the drug activity. dealing or the, the criminal activity, correct. Correct. Because like I said, Yari must have said, oh, I have an account with the bank. And he said, oh, okay, I, you could deposit this, this is a drug deal. You could deposit, you get in $500 out of it. But he deposited 10,000. You, you see what I mean? So for some reason, I guess he'd say, oh, the, everybody in the bank is my friend. I clean their cars, you know, and that's what happens. And so it's your friend, your church member, your uh, cousin, you know, and you have to be very careful because as Bahamians, you know, friends, lovers, and family, they, they expect you to, oh, that's my cousin. Don't worry, she can take this money. Okay? And that's why it's so and, prevalent. And also... It's like they're, they're, they don't care about losing a portion of their proceeds just to get it clean. Based on what I was listening to, it doesn't matter that the fact that hey, well, I had 20, but I ended up losing five. Yeah, that's you know, because you got to pay people, you got to pay the people to be quiet. That's why, and they like tip, 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 tip. And another um, um, series that I um, started to watch, what's it called? Um, or Zark or something. It's, it has something yeah. to do with this guy cleaning money as well for the yeah. Mexican cartel. So yeah. a lot of insight from that as well. Right, right. Yeah, you'll be very, very surprised what happens and even to people in, in, in very big positions. Okay, so yeah, all of that awareness training just so you would, you know, know what you did in with. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Okay, guys. Ms. Bullard will talk to you all that tomorrow, but this was um, very informative. It was a pleasure to meet all of you. Um, Ms. Bullard, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Do you think we have enough information to do question one and just, you know, call it a day? Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> you, okay. Do you think you have enough information? I mean, I'll continue. I'll go over the case studies again and the information, but I feel like it, this one was pretty simple. I don't know what the yes. other three are going to be. Yes, yes. I feel right. like so, this question one and two is pretty simple, you know. Right. Okay. So question this one is and two is pretty simple. Remember, we don't want to stray too, too far. We want a small introduction about money laundering. It focuses on placement. You can go through all three stages if you want to make up the words but then your example should be about placement. Uh, about placement. So there are a lot of cases, just go to the Tribune or internationally or wherever and, and make sure it describes placement and you get full points. Okay. Okay. So and about how much examples would you consider? You know? No more than two, no more than two. Okay. Yeah. So one could be local and one could be international. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. So, Ms. Bullard, you, you're saying tonight's class, the recording won't be uploaded with in, in, until the next two days, sir. Yes. It normally takes them about two days. So, by Thursday, Friday, the latest it should be up. But you have a cell number. Um, you can always give him a call. I know he was out sick last week. So, um, I think he's up and running now because he did send the links out and stuff. So, by Friday, if you if you don't see it up, you can call his cell number, and and that'll get it up right away. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, guys. So I I hope this was informative. I, I hope you all are excited. And like I said, it is it, it is a lot of work, but it's 
it's achievable and it's the minimum requirement if you work in a financial services, if you work in the financial services industry, and it appears that all of you do. So um, just hang in there and we're definitely gonna get through this. I want you to get some rest, put the book down, unwind, organize yourself and, and, and plan to talk to your um, family members sometime this week to get a little extra help so, so, so you can focus, okay? But have a fabulous week and um, productive week, and we'll do this again next week, Tuesday. And 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 Jamie, we need you. You you already you answering on the questions. You have to help Miss Bullock keep this going. I need you more, Miss Bullock. <laughs> okay, so there you go. There you go. I need, you need me. Yes, yes, we can. But was it was was it anything difficult that the to understand or did, what you didn't already know? No, mom, everything was basically um, straightforward. Okay. I breathed a sigh of relief, but once you started actually teaching, to be honest with you, I still miss a lot of the information because um, I'm, I'm still not even home and settled yet, I'm still out. And okay. so um, I have to depend solely on this recording. That's why I was so adamant about asking questions about it. But, and then I'm already at a disadvantage because I don't have the book as well. So I'll try to get the book before the week end and then um, just wait on the recording to go over and start my essay. Okay. And when you pop in for the book, just Miguel office is right there. Say, Miguel, please put, I need this video today. And he'll put okay. it right up here. Okay, okay no problem. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay, guys, you'll have a fabulous week. See you all next week. Bye. Good night. Okay, good, good night. night everyone. Okay, good, good night. night.